dreaded flag of vengeful sea Be careful what you say There's always someone listening The Dutchman tossed on the sea I swore and the devil heard me Now we're doomed to sell the seven seas For eternity So yo let the ocean winds blow, the line forever we must flow. We sail through them, cursed and condemned. Yo, ho, let the ocean winds blow. A sinister grin across his face said, you'll be doomed. Place. The devil heard my oath, shame of my boast. Oh, a ghostly ship from the depths, freedom from fear is the only gift of death. Yo, ho, let the ocean winds blow. The light. Cast your eyes, you'll join us like those before. We're an omen of the ocean night. When you see the flying Dutchman, it's too late for your soul. To the waters we gave now our Leave me on first, and then I'll bring him on. All right, folks. Welcome to Paranormal Roundtable. I'm your host, Josh Turner, and this is PRT. So. something else there's always something going on folks always something uh unsavory going on especially on fridays man i got so much going on um i'd like to give a shout out to a young lady that helped us today at uh uh dutch brothers she was so nice and my wife uh sometimes she's indecisive about what she wants to drink or eat and that i think all men can attest to not to sound, you know, but, but I'm a husband and I know, and she'll be like, yeah, I want this. And then when she got it, it didn't taste good because the, the flavor combination of the drink sounded pretty rowdy to me. And I said, that's not going to taste very good, but she's like, that's what I want. Nah. And so she got it and then she didn't like it, but thank goodness the sweetheart that works there, she's a really nice kid. I say kid, she's like in her twenties, but she's a kid to me. Um, her name was Sam, and she's like, you don't like it? And so she made another one for her, just for her. It was, it was a really nice gesture. And uh, I, had I was just talking 
I don't know if Anthony, if you can, if you're on the mic, he can't on StreamYard. He can't uh, be seen or whatever, which is a good thing. Uh, <laughs> although he's wearing a really cool shirt, I can say that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can't do the camera switching on. Can't do the camera stream switching on StreamYard, but we're going to use StreamYard so we can have more people be seen. People want to see our guests, so we're like, yeah, that's fine. We can do that. But uh, I was just I was just commenting on how, especially during South by Southwest right now here in Austin, folks, we have all these people that like a million people, right? They descend on Austin, and so the, the streets are packed. I was wondering, like, traffic was worse than usual. And uh, I was noticing that, like, like the, the young, the, the younger generations, they get younger and younger, you know, because I'm getting older and older, and they dress terrible. I mean, they do. They look, they look horrible. They, they I couldn't tell. Yeah. Some of them, I thought they were homeless, and I was in a store, and I thought that this uh, young couple, they were homeless people. They were digging around for change for cigarettes, and I said, you know, so I, I put a dollar up on the deal. I said they were, they were short, you know. I put like two dollars, whatever. And they were like, oh, thank you, sir. Bless you. And they were walking out. And I, and I walked out and I said, look, I know what it's like, man. I was on the streets at one time. And they kind of looked at me puzzled. And I said, well, I mean, I'm, I mean, I, I understand. I was, you know, I was in your all's position at one point. And the girl goes, oh, we're not homeless. And I'm like, well, okay. All right. Because, you know, the way you're dressed, it looks like you haven't. I didn't say anything. But it looked like they hadn't changed clothes since, you know. Well, I mean. That's actually like an aesthetic amongst uh, like young hipster. Like, oh, I figured it out. Like, Believe me, I, yeah. Uh, kids, like it is is like to basically cosplay like you're a poor person. Is, is it is it like, to cosplay to smell bad too? Because that's another. Well, yeah, they they, they got to commit to it so so they can fit in and and act like they're they're not like uh, raised in suburbia. Yeah. Like it's usually like the, these well off kids who, whose mommy and daddies they're they've uh, spoiled them. Well, that's and and like they they think like. Being poor and, and 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 opening up like these little hipster coffee shops in, in like really bad uh, parts of town, it, it's it's like a thing. It's a, it's like they're I don't know. They make like a subculture out of it, of like pretending yeah. to be poor and then going with the whole like I'm a broke, struggling college kid aesthetic. When in reality they were like they went to private schools, and and their, and their parents are paying two hundred fifty thousand dollars for them to go to a four year four year university. And, no. Well, one, one of the things I noticed when I was working, I was with Stefan the other day at one of our job sites, and there was this these two young people. Well, I guess three. One wasn't really close enough, and I was behind them, and they smelled like wet dog. I'm not joking. Mixed with the smell of marijuana and B.O. And I was like, what? You know, and, and I've noticed that a lot. <laughs> that seems to be like me and my wife, were we were literally shopping for – uh, decorations during the holidays, and and it was I don't remember if it was Christmas or Thanksgiving. Not or it was either Christmas or Halloween, something for the I think it was the Halloween or something a few months ago. And there was we smelled this weird pot smell mixed with like this smell like somebody didn't wash them. So mm -hmm. you know what I mean. And I look over there's this younger couple there, and they're like, yeah, you know, and you're like. Oh, and it was bad. It was it just, patchouli, patchouli, patchouli. It was really bad. Hair. Act like it covers up the smell. When I was younger, there were people that did that, but I mean, it was like not like now. Now it's like a thing or something, you know? Like, yeah, we're raging against the machine, man. We're we're not going to bathe yeah. until 2025, you know? And okay, it's like they think you win, dude. You win, whatever. <laughs> They think it's Whatever like they a, want to do, man. I just they think it's like a counterculture thing. Like, uh, like if you bathe and groom yourself and like take the you're time to actually out. dress, yeah, yeah. Well, then then you're part of the man or the machine or whatever. Like they, these people, they actually think that they're rebelling against something by just being like degenerate bums by by ha by doing supporting a prohibition and, on soap. Yeah, yeah. They're basically like. Uh, uh, the the generation of people alive now who grew up in who grew up in the '60s and '70s and and, and like went to Woodstock and thought that they were changing the world, and who thought the Beatles were like the greatest thing ever. Like that's the, this is basically a repeat of that. It's well, the same thing. I was shocked that Dutch Brothers when, you know, Sam. We ended up finding her name is Sam. But she came up to to help us and she didn't smell bad. 
She actually <laughs> smelled good, and I thought it was like a, a, a clean soap smell. I was like, wow, you know, because um, there were some kids that had gotten out of their vehicle, and I, I watched them walk up, and I thought you could look at them and see the smell. Just put it that way. You yeah. could see that they were not. And I was at the gym yesterday, and and sure enough, I mean, I know I was I was working out hard, so I was probably kicking, you know. But this one guy walked by me, and I nearly hurled. I was like, oh, God. I mean, you go to the gym, and you already smell bad anyway. I mean, because you're like, why are you going to shower? And then I'm going to go to the gym after I shower. Why are you just going to get dirty again, right? But this was like, geez, Louise, man, it was bad. I was like, this is horrible, you know. I mean. Mm -hmm. But anyways, so here's my shirt, everybody, so you can see it, because this camera now, the way we got it set up, you can't see, but this part of me. So here's the shirt, as you can see, it says Trap Jaw. People want to always want to look at my shirt, see what I'm wearing today. Trap Jaw was from Masters of the Universe, that's him. People say, oh, I can't see your shirt, and we do have quite a few people, about a dozen people every time, say... I, I want to make sure that I see your shirt, whatever you're wearing. And so I have a secret. I've only divulged it to Truth and to Matt Imsch about where I get my shirts. Not giving it to anyone else, not even Barton. Barton asked me about those LBL shirts, which we're going to be mailing out this coming week because I think we finally got everybody's stuff together. And let there be light. There is now light in the storage room. It was an electrical issue. They had a contractor come today. They fixed it because the people that are the landlords here are really cool. And they got it done. As soon as I asked, they got it done. Other people are like, they don't fix this. They don't fix that. They fix things for me because I'm nice to them. And, well, you know, I gave them some steaks at Christmas. Maybe that's part of it. But they got it fixed. So now we have light in there. Yay. So now we can see without fumbling around in the dark. Uh, but let me let me bring on my first. I have a guy that's going to be uh, co-hosting with me. Let's see what's going on here. He's in here, but he's not. I don't know if he's there or not. Okay, well, let's find out. Let's add him to stage. Uh, Matt, are you there? I'm here. Okay, let me put in the the headphones here because we can't see you, buddy. Are you going to hide your face? No, I, I, hold on one sec. I, I, hold on. Do what? Please. I, I'm connected and everything. I don't understand why I'm not. Is your, your camera's not, is it not connecting? Hold on. Let me... So Matt, get yourself situated. And then we have another guest that's going to be joining us shortly too. And then we're going to be doing Dang it what we got to do there he is i was wondering what was why you were hiding matt Did sorry my mic was off again i i have a new oh, so you were talking all this time with the mic off yeah i mean like they could hear me but it, it sounded it sounded like i was far away oh wow well that was dumb i have i didn't, say, camera, I didn't say anything important anyway hey anthony how are you brother hey matt it's good to see you we can't, we can't I'm, show him. I'm glad you got your because, camera working. Yeah, because of the way that we're using. The trap jaw shirt, absolutely killer. Um, yeah, the trap I, jaw. I, 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 I wore one for you guys to, tonight as well. I got a, a Spider-Man. Uh, if you can see it. I got the Yeah, Echo I see it. One. I think oh, I like, dude, I, I like shirts without color. Honestly, I actually do like black and white or gray. Those are kind of my favorites. Yesterday, um, I wore a shirt with a little too much color on it. And so I was at the gym and I felt kind of weird. I don't know. I was walking around and people were looking at me, smiling at me, you know, and I was like, I was like, this shirt has a lot of color on it. <laughs> oh, uh, I love that, man. That crap uh, jaw is awesome. Thanks, man. I got a couple of his. I got a, I got Beast Man. I got like a couple of Beast Man and and uh, a lot of Transformer ones, GI Joe. Um, but you can't tell anybody where I get them. I told you, but I can't. Nope. Uh, you and Truth are the only ones of you, you got it out of me. But I can't tell anybody else. So Matt, we we've been uh, talking. Like, so how is it going with the show? Yeah, it's going very well. Hold on one sec. I have. I have to back out of this one thing. All right, there we go. I wanted to see the uh, the live stream or the chat. The, the channel is, is going very well. 
Um, I'm extremely proud. You know, for those that don't know, I was in the hospital for five days. Um, I got out a, a few days ago and I was honored. You know, I, I, I did uh, a live stream um, from the hospital on my first night there, which was, I believe it was a Saturday. And it just so happened that that night I finally broke 10,000 subscribers. Yeah. I saw which, that. you know, being there really sucks. And to have that occur, you know, in, in the middle of all that misery. So as of tonight, I'm at 10,176. And I've always say this, and I always will. It, it's all because of all of my my extended family on Planet 412, you guys, uh, all of my friends, every single one of you are the reason that I've gotten to where I am. Yeah, and you're doing a good job. You're, you're really moving along. Um, Thank you. To, to already be you at well. 10,176, that's pretty good. I mean, yeah, I told you it, it would happen fast. Mm -hmm. Our growth is is moving incredibly fast, too. We, you or guys are crushing it. And Anthony, you did tell me that. 75. Yeah, because what you're doing is working. I mean, it, it's a tried and true formula, and you, you listen, you, you, uh, listen to all the right advice from the right people and just did exactly, you know, what, what they advise you on doing, and it's working. So, I mean, I appreciate every bit of advice that I get. From especially, everybody. you know, when you got to sit down at the table and eat dinner with uh, Josh Nanokio and, and Christopher, uh, what's his name? Uh, Garitano. Jordan. Jordan was at the next table, oh, yeah, but uh, uh, Christopher Garitano. Yep. Um, and getting to talk and to you? those guys. They can and definitely you. help you. We had, we, you know, at that conference, there was a who's who of, of what we do. And so. We have our other guest. Let's bring him on. He's he's here in the in, he's backstage. There he goes. Yahola Tiger. What's going on, my friend? How you doing? Got your you can't we can't hear you. The sound. I got you on mute. My bad. My bad. There you go. What's up, brother? Yeah, my bad. <laughs> uh, I'm doing all right though. You're doing good other than the ugly shirt you're wearing. That shirt's gotta go. Oh my hey, god. Man. What is that? Oh my god. <laughs> Come on now. Uh, that's the only team that beat my team this year, and then they lost to Washington. But oh well. Uh, hey, that was a good game, though. Yeah, it was. That 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 Sooner game was something, dude. Uh, so how are you doing? I'm doing all right, man. I'm I'm uh, I'm a little under the weather, um, but you know I I just had such a crazy week, and you hit me today. I was like, dang, I got that today. Okay, let's, let's, get, <laughs> let's get game time going. Let's let's get it. Let's get it going. Uh, I'm doing good though. Yeah. How's the podcast? Uh, the podcast is doing well. Um, you know, I had I've had a string of doing lives with uh, uh, some some people. Um, shout out to um, After Walker Paranormal. They're out of Chicago, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. um, East Tennessee Bigfoot with Matt Sieber, and then uh, you had Patrick Meekin on. Um, oh, he's a good friend of mine. Yeah. Man, he's he's a good guy. He I had him on telling his story and. It's it's been going good, man. I, I try to keep it uh, l uh, low stress, is what I would say. Yeah, for sure. So so you you actually what nation are you from? What nation? Are so you? I'm a so I'm a member of the Cherokee Nation. I uh, but I'm also Mus uh, Muscogee Creek descent, and I also got flowing through these veins is uh, Kiowa and Cheyenne Arapaho. So I'm mm. I got a little bit of everything. Yeah. So, so, so the name Warcrot Podcast that really catches. It's a cool like, name. That's a cool name. Um, how'd you come up with that? So, Yahola in uh, Muscogee Creek means war cry or it means mm -hmm. wolf cry. So, wow. in a lot of my artwork, I pay homage to my name. Um, and you'll see a wolf howling at, at a moon, or you'll see, you know, mm -hmm. if you look at some of the artwork of, of what I do, very, very subtly, you'll see a wolf in. So I guess that's a challenge. If you can go through the 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 thing and look for it, I have it hidden in every almost every uh, artwork. That's cool. You know, I'll, I'll give you a little history. The Kiowa were a very warlike tribe. They were in northeastern Texas, and one of the and they lived near the Red River. Uh, one of the things that they did was they they were allies to the Comanche, and they were the only tribe that was really truly their ally. The Comanche traded with the Cheyenne, 
and they traded with the uh, Lakota, but they weren't like considered like friends. They would they would get together and have horse races and things like that. But the Kiowa were their best friends, and they were considered to be as close to the Nermana as which is the people of like is my, my grandmother's community. So that was as close as you could get, you know. There's a little bit of feedback coming back. What is that? Yeah, it's like a little bit of an echo. I don't know if uh, anyone's listening to us on 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 speakers or. By the way, Yahoa, it's, it's a pleasure to meet you, man. We've never met before. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a. I think I'm in your your group. So I don't know how. I don't see. Sometimes I really don't know how I'd be getting in people. Apologize. I'm just, like, I'm just there. I'm just showing. I up. apologize <laughs> if, if I, I missed you in the group, but officially, face to face, it's it's an honor, man. It's nice yeah, me. for sure. Right, same way here. Is yeah, me and Matt. Me and, yeah, there's a little bit of a feedback whenever it's like a, you know, yep. I don't know what that is. Man, my, yeah, my, like if y'all are playing the show on, on your phone or on a from a speaker or something, then that, that might be where it's from. Can you hear it now? Uh, let me no. see when I talk. Yeah, oh, it's good. Then we're good. Okay. okay. Yeah, I don't yeah, think we sure got it do. together. We got it together. Yeah, because uh, I've been watching you for a while and checking you out, you know, and, and watching your progress, uh, Tiger. And um, it, it's it, – it, you do a good job. I mean, you know, like you have a lot of good topics, a lot of things going on there. Matt and I hit it off and he came to my conference. And one of the things that me and Matt are both biracial, like my mother's Hispanic and then Matt's Lebanese. And so we understand growing up in two different cultures and being mm -hmm. from, you know, different types of, you know, and uh, I know that my, my grandmother being Comanche, it, it was, it was, she lived to be, well, when she was taken and put on the reservation. She was very small. She died in the early 80s, I think like 1983 or something. And she was officially, she was like 97. But we think that she was over um, 100 because she Dang. had had six wow. summers and as she said, five winters. So okay. that's, she was about, about 104. She never cut her hair. Hair was, you know, very long. And um, she scared me. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, man. I remember waking up one day as a small kid and seeing her sitting in a rocking chair, just kind of rocking back and forth. And she would roll her own cigarettes. And there was this like uh, corn husks, like she would smoke them, you know, with this tobacco and something she always did. And I would I would I would stare at her and she would watch me sleep. And it was coming from a place of love, but it scared me. And then one day at the breakfast table, she asked me if I, she spoke Spanish. She didn't speak English, but her Spanish was also not <laughs> pure. Like you could tell there was an accent there. Um, but she, she spoke Spanish, very little English. And nobody really understood like why that was. The reason was, is because she wasn't really Hispanic. She was, you know, native and her husband was a spaniard a white guy looked like a white guy from mexico um had green eyes uh very striking and that was you know he married her and that's how i came into the world but um she asked me if i saw the dead hmm. and she asked me at a very young age and i was told that it was called ojo dotaro and that's like the gift where you can see you know into the other side which i very much did but I was terrified of it. And now it doesn't scare me at all. Like I was doing a live on Monday and something walked behind me on camera and I was just like, Oh, well, it's just there, you know, <laughs> it's just going to be there eavesdropping and doing what it does. But uh, so let me ask you this on your, on your podcast, on your show, um, you, you get stories. I was going to, and of course, everybody's going to ask this, you being of native descent. Um, what are your thoughts on the skinwalkers, the shapeshifters that everybody's talking about? So, so I, I see a lot in with non-natives talking about skinwalkers. Well, Cherokees, uh, we call it shapeshifters. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I want to no, I'm not, a, I'm not, people can say what they want to say. It's, it's really kind of my thought, but really when it comes to those uh, skinwalkers, they're not cryptids. No, no. So I see that a lot in, in non-native circles uh, on the, in the cryptid community. Um, every time I go on a show, people ask me about skinwalkers and mm -hmm. 
they're like, oh, well, you know, is it, you know, I, you see those those videos on TikTok of people saying, oh, look, there, we, you know, I caught a skinwalker and it'd be some person or some kind of weird grayish looking ball headed being that, you know, people just lump in that name. But what a skinwalker is and a shapeshifter, someone that knows those ways, um, they got to pay, they got to pay a price for that. Um, it's somebody who it's it's about power but it's also about you know I, i've heard different tribes and different nations say oh well you know there could be good skinwalkers too which no you know teach his own on that you know but uh but a lot of times they got to go through these rituals and these these uh uh these sacrifices um, I'm not going. I know quite a bit more. I'm not going to speak on the different processes, but I know that there, at one point, there was quite a few steps you had to go through. Now it's, I think it's with the medicine not being what it is anymore. Um, I've heard, you know, it's it's a lot less now, but because it, natives are, I would say, a microcosm of what we are as a nation. Mm -hmm. You know, everything has got to be now. Everything's got to be you know, at, at the touch of a drop of a hat. And, you know, that's one thing that about that, about that topic. Now I can tell you some stories, you know, I can of some people that, that have done these things and continue to do these things. And if you're listening, don't come to my house. <laughs> don't, don't do it. All right. I'm, I'm respectful as I can be on that, but, but, you know, growing up Northeast Oklahoma, you know, you always hear, especially out, kind of uh if you, anybody in the Tahlequah area you know you know you know Kenwood America or you know uh Salina or Locust Grove or Tahlequah or these different smaller native bunch and shout out to those communities I always try to give them a shout out when I'm on a big platform like yours mm -hmm. um but with a lot of things that you know they share these stories and I'll tell y'all one story now Back in the day, this is some years ago, I was told this by a, a guy out of Kenwood. Um, one thing about natives sometimes, and and if there's natives in the in the chat, y'all can agree, we kind of hate on each other a little bit. We, we got to send those flames. I've seen it. Yeah. What's that? I'm sorry? I said I've seen it. I've seen it yeah, happen. We, they said we send the heat to each other. We, <laughs> we will talk about your grandmother. We will talk about, uh, you know, we'll talk about everything. We'll roast you. A lot of bad blood there historically. <laughs> but uh but so these two uh you know women had been knew how to do these things and they were bitter enemies bitter bitter enemies and so happened they ended up in the same nursing home well one night the the orderly the nurse or i don't really know who those you know what what those people do but they're basically you know the cnas and people like that and they're you know, they, they happened to see a dog walking through the the hallway. And they looked over and said, well, what was that? You know, kind of looked, and that dog went into that woman's room. Come to find out, they been those women, those two ladies had been messing with each other for a long time. They, you know, get into that form and mess with each other. But those stories are around, you know. It's just all about, you know, being respectful about those stories. Yeah. I don't know if you guys had a had an opportunity to listen to the show. I told Matt you about it last night that I did on Monday, and it's it was an it was called Impro Anthony named it. What was it called? What did you name it? Impromptu Werewolf Stories. Yeah, and I it was about a guy. Named, it was you watched, I watched the yeah. last three. It was excellent. Yeah, it, it's about a guy named Gerald that told me about being a werewolf or what we would call a werewolf. Um, and he, he didn't really refer to himself as a werewolf. He referred to himself as a beast and that's what he kept saying. And one of the things that, that they prize is to be able to turn into a beast and shed your human, you know, and it's a, to them, it's a slap in the face to God because they hate God. And what they were trying to do is like uh, unleash their, their bestialness and let it rain and get rid of the humanness, you know, which it was created by God. They don't want that, so so it's a it's a it's an awful thing what they do. Um, but he kind of got into it unwillingly, but he allowed himself to be consumed by it. And one of the things that that I'm going to do now is interview a guy that named Joel. Who I, I already did, but I didn't finish. I got to finish tomorrow. I got to get up early tomorrow to try to do it. I don't know how I'm going to do it. 
but I'm going to do it. And and he was with him. And when it happened, he became a vampire. And it's not like, what is that? The twilight. It's not, it's nothing like we would think it is. I mean, it's very uh, horrible. Um, the existence that they lived. And since I've talked to this guy and I was on, you know, I've already had like four people message me about people that they know who have done this, who are shapeshifters that can do this. One of them even claims that her mother was a vampire and she actually contacted my wife and she's somebody that is in the community. She's probably on the chat, but um, it's interesting, you know, and another guy that claims that, and get this, that in Missouri, in, I'm sorry, in Mississippi, same state where these people were, there's a clan in the South that were originally from the Alabama tribe. And they broke away and that they settled there in Southern Mississippi. And that supposedly they can shapeshift into cats, like a black cat type creature. And they are not necessarily, they don't look at it as an evil thing. They're just something that they, they've, they've done for generations and generations, but they were supposedly excommunicated. Um, your thoughts on that, guys? I mean, what do you, we'll start with you, Tiger. You're the guest. What do you think? Yeah, you know, I've, uh, they, I think they call those water painters. Yeah, I think the water what they panther. call those. Mm -hmm. um, I know that's uh, Muskogee Creeks back in you know before removal. People used to like I said people used to know those things and and you know it could be for whatever reason they were you know sometimes they used to, you know they could have you know tried to be trying to fish or you know just basic things but uh, but I've heard that they I think I want to say they call them water panthers I think is what they call them. Yeah, and I think you know one of the things I I think too about you know, there's so many different levels and facets to this. When you look at the werewolf, dog man, whatever, there's all this, there's this big argument. And I was watching uh, Blondes and Booze earlier uh, before the show. They have their show on Friday, their Thursday, Friday. I'm on there on, on Thursdays, folks. Check it out at eight o'clock. But they were, they were talking and my wife had it on and um, they were, they were talking about, they were talking to interviewing Ryan Edwards, who's an up and coming cryptozoologist. He's written a book. He's got a second one coming out, or, or I think he might have. I think that's, it's already out. But uh, one of the things that they got into, um, you know, was, was the future of cryptozoology and everything else. And he was talking about how his belief in Bigfoot is still, he's still sort of like on the aper side of it, but now he's starting to see especially with the dog man, that it's not what we once thought it was. And he said he was once a flesh and blood person with that. And I remember him arguing with me that it was, a, it was cause I was, my views were changing and I was like, this is not a flesh and blood thing. This is not a cryptid. No, it's not. And, and the, the further we go into all this, the more that we're starting to learn about these things and that there is a to me a hundred percent i believe now a hundred percent that there is a such thing as a werewolf a man that changes into a wolf and as hard as that is for people to believe oh my gosh go look at the reptilians i mean you can watch the news and people's eyes are slitting up and people are showing videos every day of this and there was a woman that gave us a, a story. She worked at a pizza place where one of these people she worked with got mad at a coworker, and everybody saw this guy kind of like, I guess, turn briefly into something reptoid looking. Um, and so you got all these things happening, all of these people turning into you know, and different things. And our world is not what we think it is. And on Saturday, of course, tomorrow night, we'll have some people on and we're going to talk about the alien agenda and what it is, if there are demons or what they are, but that it's very much uh, a thing it's happening and, and people are, are witnessing it. And I think that it, it has always been something that people wanted was to be one with nature and be one with the power that nature holds. And I think that these beings, they choose like wolves and panthers and bears to shape shift into the Vikings that were big into the bear. That's what the song was at the beginning of the show, the bear King it's based on the legend. And I know that you probably have heard this a million times. Uh, you taught you because, you know, me and Matt both have had dog man experiences, but I mean, I'm sure you've heard it. 
from different places, reservations and, and people that you've interviewed about shape-shifting, about becoming one or whatever. And now, like you said, there is a push for people to say, well, it's not really a bad thing, but that's bull crap because in order to become that, you have to sacrifice something, you know. So you kind of have to be a little bit of a sociopath to be willing to sacrifice your close uh, kin. Mm -hmm. Have you have you talked to anyone who's told you point blank like that that they are that? No, I mean, I mean a lot of it too. I'll be honest. It's I go back to kind of what I mentioned earlier. You know that medicine that we call it. So I want to clarify. I, I, I talk like as if people know what I'm what I what I think people I think I'm saying. Yeah. So when I when I refer to native magic or you know things like you know magic, what people in you know, like it's not Harry Potter, but it's, it's, it's medicine. It's, you know, it can be root medicine, it can be, you know, uh, plant, it can be anything, you know, those ways are, are kind of gone. And I heard a story. I don't even know. I should be sharing this, but I'll, I'll share it. Um, I'm kind of getting goosebumps talking or even thinking about it, but, um, there was a story that was told to me by my grandpa. He's since passed, um, 2021, and he was telling me as, as a little kid, I was probably, you know, seven, eight. I'd always ask questions like, hey, you know, what's this? You know, what's that? And he'd say, just be quiet and listen. And he told me the story about a man who who did that. And when he was when he shifted into that other being, I, I don't remember exactly what the being was, but uh, another animal came up and ate his guts. And he could wow. he couldn't be able to to change back. Um, oh wow! And you know, there are stories out there like that. I'm sure that there's people you know in the chat have heard something similar to that. But that's one thing about about that whole you know skinwalker and shapeshifter. It's uh, it, it's very creepy. You know, I had a a, a guy that I knew. Uh, and I'll share this too. I hadn't really much, talked about this much because it's really, it's really, it really creeped me out, you know. But he knew some things. He knew, he knew exactly like what. Uh, he knew, he knew certain things, and what he would do was, he had this boss that we had this boss that he just didn't like and couldn't get along with. And one day, uh, our boss called me one day and he said, "Man, he said uh, I need, I need your help." And I said what do you need my help with? You know, I'm kind of confused. He said, uh, my wife sees uh, this, this white looking wolf crouched down in front of our house. Now where this man lived was in the middle of town. You know, he had a neighbors on both sides, neighbors on the other side. Like it's a busy road that he lived on. And he, and he said, uh, my wife sees this white wolf. It's outside. It's, it's looking at her, but, only she could see it. He couldn't see it. And then as, you know, things started to progress, you know, he, he started seeing it. And he asked me, so what, he said, what should I do? And I said, well, I said, you know, you're, you're the Jewish faith, you know, you talk to your God. You know, you talk to your people, you talk to your, your higher power. And he goes, uh, well, you know, I have been, and, you know, it, it won't come in the house. I said, I said, that's exactly right because you're doing things to ward it off. You know, he can only, this, this thing can, this, and I'm not going to say if it, I'm not going to speculate on if it was somebody, you know, it could have been the guy that, you know, had, I don't want to go that far, but I'm just telling the, the story from seeing this thing. Um, and he said, well, you know, it, it, won't, it, it, it seems like it keeps inching closer to the house. And I just said, you know, I said, I would pray every time. I said, I would do what you do. You know, what I would do is I would, you know, smoke myself off with cedar or, you know, sweet grass, something of that nature, or, uh, you know, and you pray. You, know, you pray to the true higher power. You don't, you know, sometimes when I say that, you know, you know, people can believe their religions and they can, you know, do that, but there's a true higher power, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, and, after a while, it went away, um, but he he quit he quit pretty quickly after that. And so, but he was seeing that he was seeing it. Look, he said it looked like a man 
very skinny man that was uh, dressed in a white wolf kind of skin, so I say. Wow. And, you know, and you hear that all the time. I mean, not too long ago, there's a friend of ours who used to have a uh, food truck downtown and an area where he lived. Uh, what was that area called? Creedmoor? Yeah. It was Creedmoor. Yeah. And we had a guy who, well, actually it was a woman who, well, her husband saw it too. So I guess a couple, but really originally it was a woman and they have to burn their trash out there because it's way out in the country. And uh, it's outside the city limits. And so she was burning her trash. And every time she would go out to burn her trash, she would see something that looked like a Bigfoot looking creature that would come close. But when she would light the fire, it would leave. And then at one point she saw this giant wolf like creature that came really close up to the fire, was not afraid of the fire at all. And um, one of the things that when I talked to this guy, Gerald, he told me that he said that, that these, beings that we we encounter you can tell whether or not they're because they're not afraid of fire the, the a werewolf is not afraid of fire you're not going to be able to scare it off by a, a fire a flame and um and they even have a thing they called like hell flame they didn't call it hell fire they called it a hell flame which was blue and it was a purification and it was just something that they would wave their hands over and if they held their hand there too long um and and if the flame turn white then of course it's a fire it's going to burn but it was like something that was pure so if if they held it there too long it would purify them and they would lose their attachment and then they would have to start all over and they could be in big trouble because that purification fire is a purification and it's been a purification for countless uh, you know different civilizations it's always been thought of as that so one of the things you know i was wondering about since time immemorial, you know, people have sat around fire because it was something that kept you safe. But this woman, she said there were distinctly two different things going on. And her husband thought, you know, come on, he's working all the time. He was a truck driver. He's like, now you're scared to go out and burn the fire, burn the trash. So he went out there one night and he was doing it and it blew, the fire blew. And uh, th these people are actually fans of the show, and it caught his paranormal roundtable shirt on fire, which I thought was the worst part of the story. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> but uh, so he goes, I took my shirt off, and I threw it down, and I was stomping on it. I said, now you're stomping on it. That's great. And so he looks up, and he sees this wolf that was black, and it was, like, coming right up to the fire. So he grabbed the shirt and went inside or whatever. And then he showed me and I, so I had to send him another one, but he, he's a nice, nice kid. But uh, what ended up happening, this wolf started showing up at their trailer, like very often, like it was showing up. And every time they would go out to, uh, you know, burn the trash. So his wife decided to give it some food. And I don't think that was a very good idea. And so whatever the, the Bigfoot type creature, they saw it one other time. They think that it just lived in that area and it really was kind of a coincidence. Now, sometimes there are coincidences. I don't really believe in them, but this thing didn't seem to do anything else. And But this giant wolf, they said that every time they saw it, it looked like it was bigger, like it was getting bigger. And it kept getting closer and closer to their house. And then at one point, it decided to go ahead and just snatch up one of their cats. And I told them it was a very bad idea to feed this thing. I don't believe in gifting. And I know what that is. And that's what that is. And everything was fine until they had a little get together. And some family came. And it was like Easter. And this thing was seen by four people walking on two legs. Uh, and so I told them, I said, that's exactly, and then that ended, you know, whatever, but it continued to come to the trailer and do what it did. Interesting enough, like he, the, the man, you know, he, his wife is Mexican, but he's Yatki Indian. He's not uh, Mexican. It's Yatki. And that's in South Texas, North Mex Northern Mexico. And they are an actual native, you know, native American tribe. Um, through them, I met another guy who's a Kickapoo, and he is a friend of theirs, and he used to live down in near Eagle Pass, and he was telling me about a story of a roadrunner. Like, he literally saw a roadrunner going across the road. A couple days later, this same bird that he saw 
was running around in the yard by the house. And he was like, he thought it was interesting that he saw a roadrunner two days before or whatever. Then he sees one. And then he started seeing a coyote and then a deer. And these animals were like different animals every day, like another animal than a rabbit. And so eventually he said that he, you know, his wife being not versed in what you were or not, you are or not supposed to do. She fed it. She fed one of the animals. I can't remember which one it was. And then the, the, that, that very next day, this thing showed up looking like a man walking on its hind legs that looked wolf-like. I'm, I'm sorry, deer-like, yeah. like, like a not deer, like we talk about these deer. And it was walking around on two legs by the fence line. And so his brother-in-law took a shot at it, and it just jumped, and it took off like a deer, like a regular deer. But it was walking on its hind legs. So when we were talking about this, we were discussing this, and we were all talking about it. And so I, I said, that's a lesson to be learned there because he knew like you're not supposed to feed or entertain these things because when you gift that, it's basically a way of, of supplication. You're saying it's OK to be here and be in my territory. And that's not a good thing. Not at all. You can call it a skinwalker, shapeshifter, whatever you want to call it. The name is whatever. But that's what that is. And he said he doesn't know what, what tribe or who it was, whatever. But he was positive that it was a shapeshifter. He had his suspicion because he believed that there was a guy who had been wanting um, to be with his wife. And they kind of competed for her affection. And something strange happened. His sister drowned. And it was a suspicious thing. So he said that is kind of how it starts. Um your thoughts on that, guys? What do you think? Yeah, I, I want to actually comment real quick on before we get away from the gifting. You know, I'm sure numerous people in the chat, Josh, I know you have. I'm sure, Tiger, you've had uh, uh, heard about many negative things that have occurred when people start to gift these cryptids or these inhumanoids or humanoids, whatever you want to call them. And then all of a sudden, you stop and then you hear some situations of violence that occur towards families uh, or quite, you know, uh, uh, honestly, you might have a situation. I had heard um, I was sent a story that I'm that I'm going to have on one of my uh, videos soon where a gentleman, uh, I believe, in North Dakota had um, been gifting uh, uh, either a Sasquatch or a, a group of them, a family, and then stop. And not long after it, he started having very, very uh, serious and violent events that were occurring around a dog man or a skinwalker that looked like a dog man. So, you know, I fully agree with, with anyone saying, you know, do not gift the, these beings because you have nothing but negative that can come from that. Um, you know, I, I've always also, this is the first time, Tiger, that I've had the ability to speak with someone. I told Josh I was excited to be able to speak with you tonight. I, I, I have a lot of questions, uh, you know, things that happen on reservations and, and um, you know, the, the different types of of beings that you've uh, been involved with. And then you also have your reservation police on there. What's some of the, the, the more standout type of events or creatures that you've had where you are from? So one, one of the entities that I'm very scared of, I've always been scared of it. I'm not really Bigfoot. You know, if I saw one, I'm sure I'd probably be freaking out. You know, I may have seen one, and I can tell that story too. But the entity, so I'm I'm a born and raised Tallahassee, Oklahoma. Um, you know, the Illinois River is right there, and uh, we always talk about these big snakes. Um, and you know, a name for them is tie snake. Um, I know them as the the creek word, and I'm not gonna say it on here. Um, but it's a it's a snake that has antlers and it's got a uh, kind of a beard goatee and it's uh, kind of facial hair. Uh, you know, sometimes it you know has different looks 
depending on where it's at. But um, a story that I that I have a few stories about that about this snake. You know, this snake is, uh, and it's not. And it, I say snake, and I'm I'm using it singularly, but it's really a, a few snakes. It's it's a uh, quite a bit of quite a bit of snakes. There's more out here uh, than just one. Is what I'm trying to say. And uh, when I was on the Illinois River floating, being a young guy, doing young people things, y'all know about that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but I'm sitting out on the, you know, I'm I'm kind of wading out in the water, and I hear, uh, well, off to my side, I kind of look over and I see this girl, and she she's off the side of the raft, and she falls off into the water, and I'm looking at her as I'm as I'm floating down and. And she never comes back up. And I'm like, oh, wow, okay, let me, you know, let me let me swim over there and see what's going on. And I, and I dove down, and all of a sudden, in this nasty brown water, I see a hand come up from from kind of the darkness of this deepest part of this, this river. And the river, some, in some aspects, is not very deep. In other aspects, it is very deep. Um, and I grab that hand, and I pull her up using the weight of the, of the raft. And I pull her up and throw her on the on the on the the raft, and she looks at me and she says, "You saved my life." And I said, and I kind of looked at her, you know, not really, you know, thinking much of it. You know, I'm probably 23, 22, and she's like, "You know, you saved my life. You, you know, something was pulling me down." And I looked at her, I said, "What it feel like?" And she, you know, I kind of asked her kind of what it felt like, you know, when it's pulling. She said, "It felt like a like a snake pulling her down." During that during that time, and this is all you can all look this up. And I cannot like the my memory. Uh, I talk about this on the podcast, and and right now my memory is 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 lacking on on the details of this. But it's you can just type in Illinois River drowning, and it's 2017, 2015. Um, you know there was a it was a real bad flooding that that following or the following summer. And there was a little boy, and I remember him looking at him, and he was playing on one of these branches that was sticking out from the lower side of the water. And I look at him, and something just told me just to watch him, and then we floated by. And I still I get goosebumps telling the story because he, because the little boy lost his life that day. Um, so we're we're floating, and you know, all of a sudden I, I kind of get. I, I get this spidey sense and I talk about this sometimes from time to time on the podcast. And I look, I kind of look and I'm like, man, I, I gotta get out the water. So I pulled all of our people out of the water and it's clear as day. I remember it on the, the side of the bank that was the tallest. And then you had the water and then the, the, the bank. One half of that water was moving the opposite way. So the water was moving this way as nat- naturally it did. And then the water was moving the opposite way. He, the, he was coming. That snake was coming. During that time, the river got so bad with pollution. That's what they do. They protect those waters. And one thing that uh, that I was I was always very cognizant of because I grew up in that river. So I, I take care. You know, we're always taught take care of things, leave things better than you than you had them. In that summer, there was multiple people that had drowned in that river, um, and you know, sometimes people say, especially people around there, you know, say that the snake got them. And one thing I think that I think about quite a, quite a bit about that summer is the flooding. And it basically, that it, it wiped out every floating. Because the, the floaters, was, you know, dropping glass bottles in the bottom of the, of the river, sinking beer cans, throwing all types of, you know, stuff in the, into the, the river. Those snakes probably got mad and said, it's, it's time. We got to take care of this water, and it flooded it. it. It knocked out basically every single floating place on that river. They had sand. I've never seen so much sand covering buildings, and it, I don't even know where that sand came from or this rocks. It wasn't sand; it was like rocks, but it was real pebbles basically. And it covered, you know, basically all of the parking lots. It, I mean, it it devastated, you know, the the floating industry in Tahlequah for a few years. But I remember that, you know, and. Uh, you know, people always talk about missing 411 and, you know, people showing up missing 
near bodies of water, but their fold their their clothes are folded neatly. Mm-hmm. You know, and I had a uh, a girl that I knew in college. I'm I'm just really I'm I'm just I'm I'm going, man. I'm just I'm going for it. Yeah, dude, you you do you. Um, same river. Um, they were going down to kind of mess around, you know, drink around and uh, near this the, the river and. They went to a place where there's not a lot of people that go down there. And one thing that uh, about that is it kind of it's kind of a more secluded area, so you can't really you had to get down there by walking. And so they parked the cars up at the parking lot and they walked down. And the the girl this and so the girl that I knew was friends with these two people that I'm telling the story about. And the friend goes back up to the road uh, to grab a, I think the music speaker or something. And she comes back and her friend's missing and all, all his clothes are ne- neatly folded next to that water and he's gone. Um, you know, my, I think my dad went to school with his mother. And so that was real big time news. A Tahlequah kid, you know, been around that river for a long time. Um, you know, just going missing. Um, and so that, so the waters in Oklahoma, and I would say probably around the country, the world, um, there's all these snakes out there that I, I you know, that, that really scare me. Um, as I got older, as I was young, I'd, I'd run around in lakes, ponds, whatever it was, you know, rivers, didn't really bother me. And you know, as I've gotten older, you know, I've always, I always try to make sure that I don't talk about these things before I go out and do well, what I'm going to do. You know, one thing about if you see this this being is you're not supposed to talk about it for a certain amount of time. Um, you know, one another uh, caveat to that is if you speak about it, you you know something's gonna may happen. I'm not gonna say gonna happen. So I say it may happen. Um, another thing that uh, that I've heard, and I, I heard this out in you fall a lake um, out in you fall Oklahoma and you know Shakota area. I've heard this a, a few times. Um, but I had friends that would go out in the middle of this lake. It's the largest lake, I think in Oklahoma, I believe, but it's got all these ceremonial grounds that, that were flooded over when they made this lake. So, you know, these snakes, this was the snake's home, you know, and this is, you know, people, medicine, you know, graves, homes, all these people wiped out, you know, their, their belongings wiped out. And I had a friend one time reach out to me and he was like, uh, Hey man, uh, I know you know things. That's what. That's how people start conversations with me. I know you know some things, but I want to ask you about this. And I'm like, well, what was it? He said, I heard a cow mooing in the middle of that lake. And I said, that's that snake. Oh, a snake. Okay. That's that snake. Mooing what like they'll a... do is they'll, they'll make you, you know, you'll, in your mind, most people will probably think, oh, well, there's probably a, a cattle or some type of cow drowning. So people are going to rush over there and dive in the water and that's a way to lure people because in that area there's a lot of cattle a lot of farm a lot of different ways you know i had a, a cousin of mine who had seen the snake it's fate it's seeing its face uh she was she was pregnant and this is how you follow lake and you follow oklahoma and she was swimming and she was uh basically went underwater and 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 what you what about this lake is it'll be basically flat and then it'll just dip off well, she went down underneath right on the edge of that, and all of a sudden the snake come up. You know, with the, you know, I don't, I can't remember how she described it. I, she told that story to me probably t- a couple of years ago when our, uh, we had a family member pass. I think it was my aunt pass. She told me that story. But yeah, that's, that's probably the entity, you know, on the Muscogee Creek and the Cherokee Red, Reds that I'm real scared. I get scared about because I have two little girls and, you know, I, I spent a lot of my time out in that, on those, you know, those bodies of water. And so, um, and then, you know, there's a, there's a myriad of other um, entities. You got LP. Um, uh, I don't really want to say their names. I'm out here. My parents, they got, I think they got LP out here running around. I'll be lost now, but. So you're um, 100% <laughs> in the belief of you, you go along with what we obviously all hear countless times. You just don't. You don't say their names. You don't speak about them. Yeah. You are one hundred percent down on that one. I, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually break that rule, right? Because <laughs> I gotta tell you guys, 
Falak, which I don't know if Matt, you're you're Lebanese. If you know Falak is actually the the giant Absolutely. snake of Arabian uh, folklore. What what Falak is is basically um, he lives, I believe, in the sixth hell or something like that. That's where he's found. But his avatars will float up into lakes and rivers and even certain oceans and inland seas like the Caspian. Um, if you look up the, the, the legends of, of this uh, being, um, it's he, I, I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's like there's a fish. Anthony, maybe you could look it up. Just look up phallic, F A L A K. There's a giant fish called. Bahamut or Bahama, I can't, I can't, I don't know, I don't want to butcher the name, but anyway, that fish swims around in rivers, and he will attach himself, and he'll, he'll sneak in underneath that fish, and according to the Arab folklore, this isn't Islam. Yeah, it says he, he, reside, he resides below Bahamut. Bahamut, that's his name. And so, what, what oh yeah, I've heard of that. Yes, Absolutely. and so, and especially in the Lebanese, Chaldean, and the Phoenician tradition, this giant snake will inhabit rivers and lakes, and it will attack people, and it will cause misfortune and bad things to happen. But it's not really, it's weird, because it's his, it's his spiritual avatar that he, he commands. He doesn't come up out of the sixth hell himself, um, because God commands that he doesn't. And, and the only, according to the tradition, and correct me if I'm wrong, you might could look this up, it's supposedly the only thing that stops him from devouring the world is this God's foot or something like that. Yeah. It says, uh, what, it says yeah, to be so powerful people, that, that only his fear of the greater power of God prevents it from swallowing all the creation okay. above. So God's God's hand or foot, however you say stops him from that's the, the tradition that I read years ago, but it's supposedly so powerful, you know, and then there's, this is what's even weirder. Okay. Like, if you look at like the Choctaw, um, uh, you, you know, I'm sure there's Choctaw that live, you know, there's a lot of them in Oklahoma. Thank you for that donation, Liberty. Uh, at least I know I'm not ugly. <laughs> uh -huh. Tony, you make fun of me. He says, I'm, you don't get any donations because you're ugly. I said, well, I tried different things, you know, um, change my hair. I'm going to get a haircut tomorrow. We'll see if that helps, you know, see if we I got to force Tony to do spiffy up a little bit, push ups and leg jumps for every dollar that we get again. Yep. Yeah. And then we'll sit here watching him fail and everybody be like, leave, stop tor torturing that poor kid. He doesn't know how to do it. It's horrible. Hey, real quick, yeah. before you go, Josh, I just wanted to mention, you know, a lot of people here, obviously with Marvel comics, they hear about the Nordic type of things with Thor and, and you graze all the world tree. Well, with uh, uh, Bahamut, um, I, I, and this reminded me of it, uh, is actually, again, giant fish acting as one of the layers that, that, and I remember hearing this as a child, that it's like holding up some of the layers of the mm -hmm. earth, the earth how yeah. big this, this fish is supposed to be. So. Some similarities to, to you know, uh, the Nordic. The world like serpent, Jormungandr. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And, and it's weird because, oh. like, all of the natives, too, they have their own traditions of this. One of the traditions, the native traditions that I was looking into, I believe it was Algonquin, but it actually mirrored the Lakota tradition, too, of, like, in the end, when everything is said and done, the only thing left will be a wolf. That's mm. it. And then when he dies, his blood will nourish and then there'll be trees again. But the Icelandic tradition, which isn't necessarily the same as the Norse tradition. Now people will argue with me and they'll be like, well, that's Norse too. Yes and no. But they have a totally different view of gnomes and elves than their Norwegian cousins. And then you'll get mm -hmm. into a whole argument with them about the red caps and all this other stuff. They do all mirror one, and that they do believe in shapeshifters. All the Scandinavians do, but they also believe in the end when Fenrir eats the, the, you yep. know, the moon, the earth, everything, whatever, and then his son is waging war on Earth, which is Loki's offspring, the mm -hmm. the, the bad guy basically. Jormungandr is not really a part of Loki's deal. Loki, you know, was the one that fathered those entities, but Jormungandr is the world serpent that the coils, right. he coils around, um, you know, 
And it's it's crazy. I mean, and the end of he, the world. Is when yeah, Thor the end is, of the world. Yeah, the and Surtur, which is the fire demon, which represents the hellfire of of the, the devil, he comes up and he smotes the earth with fire while all this is happening, and it's not orchestrated. That's the thing. A lot of people think that Ragnarok is orchestrated. It's not. And in the native tradition, it's the same way. Um, supposedly at the end, there's several tribes that agree with this. Not all. There's All tribes have their own view. That's another thing that, that aggravates me is they think, well, well, the Native Americans believe, like, there's a bu bunch of Native Americans. They're not all the same, you know, or people will tell me, they're like, well, you're Mexican, you know, uh, tell us about, you know, whatever. Yeah, okay, dude. I mean, I'm Mexican, but I don't play an accordion, and I'm not, you know, just drinking Dos Equis all day either, but... You know, but that's the stereotype that people, the Miguel Guetta, how you doing? And that's a stereotype. And I said, there's a lot of different regions of Mexico. They eat iguanas down in the Yucatan. But in the north, they'd be like, ah, that got you know, you know, like that's gross. We're not going to eat that. You know, so people have this tendency, you know, just like uh, in Lebanon. There's Marianite Christian. There's Orthodox Christian. There's right. Sunni Muslim, Shiite Muslim, and different sects of Shiite. And then there's Drus. And they are all different. They don't all have the same beliefs, but most of the I'm beliefs. Actually, I'm actually of the Maronite right, which is yeah, it's, it's Catholicism. It's just a little twist of of Latin versus Lebanese. It's it's still Catholic, but Maronite right is just and all it is is a marrying of the Greek form of the in the ecclesiastical Latin. That's all it is. And what it is mm -hmm. is the Orthodox marrying with the Catholic Church on certain beliefs. And because, you know, the, the Phoenicians that, you know, and so when you talk about this uh, thing, you were talking about tiger, about this, the spirit, and, and the, which is like a spirit, right? You would consider it to be a shape-shifting spirit or something that could turn physical. This, this snake. Um, I would probably say it's, it's probably more, I don't want to say flesh and blood. Cause it's not, there's, I think it, it's just old school. I just, I don't know, it's hard to, it's hard to describe these things and, um, when it comes to you know this specific because i know people will say oh it's a python or you know or it's this or it's that or you know it could be it could be a myriad of, myriad of things um you know when it comes to that i guess you'd say medicine magic or whatever you want to call it but yeah I mean, it could be a spirit you know that's you know it's in the same realm as all these other water entities that you know uh, that you know i wouldn't say plague but it just protects the the water well, it plagues you apparently, and in, 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 if you litter or do bad things to the water, I mean that's kind of its job. I believe somebody said that earlier that it's a um, a native thing that 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 that's what happens. Rye, Rye how you doing, Rye? I saw you in the chat. Great, great, new stuff. <laughs> you guys all are up and comer podcaster YouTubers, and I, I, as everyone knows, I love to promote up and comers and youtubers and i like you guys you guys all have good shows you have good stuff going on i, I see the man right how you doing man on your nice. shows man and hey matt good to see you buddy tiger. i was like man tiger's got to come on the show because he's a he's a come he's he's up and comer um, awesome good to meet you tiger yeah this is Rye hey, boss from codega and that's yahola tiger and of course rye you know matt imsh <laughs> Of course, of course. <laughs> well, Rye, you live in Mexico, so I do. I, I was I was laughing when you were talking about uh, eating the iguanas. Yeah, they call them uh, uh, tree chickens. Uh, is, is what they do. Yeah, it, it's it's a yeah. it's a common thing, and and I, I would say you know the Yucatan and Central uh, Mexico as well. It's uh, they they have them. You know, take them home and cook them up, stick them on a stick, and, uh, and have you uh, ever had them, Rye? No, no. Maybe I, I have not. Uh, you know what? If I was ever given the opportunity, I would partake. Uh, I'm not going to go out and actively seek it. But if someone's going to present it with me, um, yeah, for sure. Well, they eat guinea pigs down in Peru. And I, no, I, that's I, crazy. Not yeah, a fan. I won't do it. I have two guinea pigs, Galactus and uh, and Thanos, and I will never allow them to be eaten. So, Hey, Josh, you uh, get hard up, man. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Man. <laughs> Well, my fish have been slowly dying. My imbunas, my African imbunas, and they're such cool, pretty, beautiful fish. I can't figure out why. My friend Big John, from back in the day, he's got an aquarium place, and he's been trying to trying to figure out what's going on with it. Um, but it started with some bad medicine that's been hidden our way because of some stuff that's been going on. So we're trying to figure it out. But uh, 
So, Tiger, back to what you were saying, like when we and we got into the whole Falak, which is the Arabian uh, serpent that 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 you know is a really bad dude that can do all these things. There's different hells, and I know one of the Choctaw traditions. Jerry Williams is on my show, and I've had multiple Native Americans on my show. Um, I'm proud to say that I have a lot of friends in this community who are Native American, and that's not you know take and say, oh yeah, I know some Native American people. No, dude, it's because my views are very, very similar because I believe that the First Nations people have a lot of information. And I'll say this, people love to use it when it fits their narrative. And then later on, they're like, well, you know, they're really just ignorant savages. They just have all kinds of weird beliefs. When it doesn't fit their view, you know, it's like, oh, well, really, we should, you know, that, that, you know. but that's, that's kind of what happens. But he was on the show and he talked about the Choctaw tradition of the spider, which was it's very central in what it what it did. Now, there is a Piro Indians. They they are same thing. The spider was very important to them. Not only did they hunt and eat them, but they also revere it as one of the creation, one of the things of creation. But there's a good one and there's a bad one. And the good one lives above the ground and the bad one lives down in the earth. And it's really weird because their tradition mirrors that of the, the Falak, which is like in the sixth level of hell. Then there's like the seventh level of hell. And I can't remember which one is which, but I know in the Pieroa tradition, they hold up the top layer of hell, which is very weird. <laughs> and they eat people pretty regularly. And, and so there's these giant spiders that will come out as avatars. But oddly enough, there are good ones. And the good ones actually will stop the bad ones by eating them. They cannibalize them to keep them from attacking you. So if you're bitten and someone is found paralyzed, you know, they have, they give them two or three days to come out of it. And then if their heart stops and they're done, um, and this is a giant spider that is supposedly responsible for this. I forgot the name of it, Anthony. We, we, we were talking to the etymologist from, uh, not Peru, what's it called? Chile. What is it called that there's a spider that, that they bite somebody and they paralyze them and it's know. a giant spider and they call know. it some... good spiders do that. It, there's a giant spider that they're, they're, they're talking about that they can't prove that it exists. It's not in science yet, but this is what's crazy is that if that happens, they give them two or three days and then if they don't come out of it. So then what happens is their soul is taken down and eaten by this Jeez. world spider, which is a horrible way to go. Yeah. Uh, and then you become sort of I like one of, one of its minions. Um, and so you have these different levels of hell, you know, and they, you know, different cultures. If you put them all together, you kind of come up with the picture. And I've been saying that for years and you'll see that there's a, a, a connection there. In your tradition, I don't I don't know a lot about the Cherokee tradition. I know I know this. I know a lot of people claim that they're Cherokee, and if you let them tell it, there's a million of them running around. Because every time I talk to somebody that looks like they're they, they're Snow White, and they're like, "Well, I'm really Cherokee." I'm like, "Wow, because you have blonde hair and blue eyes." Yeah, well, my great great grandma <laughs> had some Cherokee, and you know, well, one day she met one, and they talked, and that's so I'm Cherokee, and I say, "Oh, okay, I get that." But you know, I've seen it. I've seen all kinds of people claiming Cherokee heritage. That's just the only or, tribe you know because of it's the, the only key. tribe they know, I guess. So they just throw. I, it or it's uh, one 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 key one key detail when it comes to people. You know, like say those things. They'll say, you know, I just want to let you know that my my great 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 grandmother <laughs> was a Cherokee princess. Yeah, yeah. yeah like they're gonna send it from like tribal like, chiefs oh, yeah. and elders. Like, okay, who, who she married to? You know, and they're like, oh, well, I think it was. Uh, and they start going down their family tree, and then I'm just like, oh man, you know, I get a good kick out of that sometimes. Mess with people. <laughs> well, there are real Cherokee that live in Oklahoma, a lot of them, and there's Choctaw there too. Uh, I know this about the Cherokee. I don't know a lot about their traditions. But I know the Chickasaw, the Cherokee, and the Choctaw were all originally descended from the same people. And they kind of went three different, you know, they're, they're very, very close cousins. Um, but I always get people telling me that I, it's always it's always Cherokee. I'm like, well, there must be 32 million Cherokee in this country. Good grief, man. But uh, when you look at the, the traditions of the natives, you know, like, and 
they, they mirror one another. If you talk to, you know, uh, the aboriginals, as they call them in Australia, which isn't really a, a, a good term because it's not really what they are. They're, they're the natives there. Mm -hmm. But if you talk to them, they will tell you that one of their traditions involved a giant lizard and a giant spider. And they claim that these beings still live within the earth. And we know that if you if you listen to us on Saturday, you'll hear people talking about the Lizard King. The Lizard King, who was actually sung about by Jim Morrison. Jim Morrison, yes. Yeah, he talks about the Lizard King, and people are like, well, where did he come up with that? Well, he took drugs. Well, that's kind of how the medicine men, that's what it's called, medicine. And the medicine men would take drugs to come up with what they... That's how the Pieroa figured out where the spider, that that was an important part of their tradition, um, just like the Choctaw tradition. Just And, and then you go to uh, the uh, Australian and then the Scandinavians. They all have pictures of these giant spiders. Why is that? Well, because supposedly they are a part of the inner earth and they control their own realm. They control a level of it. Just like the giant snake, which to me, Falak is Jormungandr, basically. Mm -hmm. So you got those different traditions that go, they're always within the earth. And one of them is a giant spider. So, I mean, that's. Are they ungoliant? Ungoliant or the, 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 the Cinderan or Cinderan or something as one of, of those giant spiders. Uh, mm -hmm. that they speak about as well. Sorry, Ryan, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, yeah, no problem. No, I was going to say, you know, if we're talking about back to Peru, oh. you know, you look at the Nazca lines, what do they have? One of those is a spider. spider. Yeah, That's right. Yeah, and everybody likes to think that way back then people were, were silly and they didn't know what they were talking about. But, you know, if you look at it, like when Morrison's talking about the, the Lizard King, he says, I am the Lizard King. At the end, what he's talking about literally is that when his bandmates have said this too, that he he said that when he would go out on stage, he was not him, that something took over him and inhabited his body and was singing through him. And he was just like the avatar for it. It was like a demonic entity. And when he would talk about this to, to people, there's, there's a lot of people who claim that he was referring to himself as the Lizard King because he was in touch with some sort of reptile reptilian being um which we know now by looking at some of the modern day singers and artists and whatnot i mean their eyes are slitting up and they're doing whatever you know and the 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 number of cases that we're getting at least here at prt i don't know about everybody else involving like spider-like entities or creatures snakes you know and, and things like that it's ramping up but lizards and, um, you know, of course, werewolf type beings and, and, and it's just, you know, I don't think that's a coincidence. I don't think that this is a coincidence because something's about to happen. And of course, in Ragnarok, it, it's just like in a lot of the native traditions, it's not all, thank you for that donation, Barry. It's not all, um, what you call, um, it's not really coordinated what happens in Ragnarok. And I'll tell you why this is important and you guys can, can, can play off of this. When Jormungandr makes his move, Thor has to ride out to fight him. Mm -hmm. He defeats Rag he defeats uh, Jormungandr, but Jormungandr bites him and he dies. It's a critical blow. Yep. And he's not able to go back and help Fenrir, who ends up killing Odin. Mm -hmm. And of course, all hell breaks loose because at this point, Surtur makes his move, which he's in control of a, of a level of hell too, which is where the hell flame is. Right. He comes up and he spreads it throughout the land, burns everything. They're not all friends. Uh, Surtur, in fact, at one point was at war with Loki. So the, if you read the traditions, especially each country has their own traditions, right? Um, you will find that these beings all live independently of each other. And it was opportunism is what happens. Now we saw this in this little war that went on here. Uh, there were people who weren't involved. But on both sides, they were like, I got a bone to pick. I'm going to get in there and I'm going to take my shot at whoever it was. Different people were getting attacked by different people. I was like even kind of like sitting back with the guys that were my enemies and looking and going like, do you know these people? They're like, no, I don't know them either. But they're taking their opportunity to do whatever they're going to do to us and to each other because that's mm -hmm. war. 
Um, now, of course, it was just an information war. Nobody was was creating tidal waves, and there was no fire, but it was still a form of war. Communi- it was a it was a uh, information war. But th- this is what happens. So, in all of these traditions, there's these these uh, opportunistic things that that go on. And I think that in any given time, if these beings or, or different types of whatever entities had their opportunity, they would take it because they don't like mankind and they don't like especially particular types of people. And I really fully believe that they are opportunistic and they don't all play together. They don't play well together because evil never does. They don't communicate, mm-hmm. work well together. That is their Achilles heel. But they do they do take their opportunities. And so what you were saying, Yohola, about being in the water and it's something that you're afraid of, you know, that is a fear as old as mankind, something in the water, a particular yeah, something you can't see. see. Yeah. I was watching a video of these people that were in this much water and they were in the Bahamas and they were like, Oh, frolicking around and this tiger shark. And he wasn't as big as I've seen him. He's about six foot, but he was like a torpedo and he came up and Ray, and I was like, and it was right in front of these people, and they were like, "Oh my god!" You know, because well, I mean, they're in their element. What do you expect? But they're all shocked, and this thing grabbed the stingray, and I said, "It could have been your foot," and it came in like a torpedo. That that tiger shark was like boom, and so when you go out into those those waters, you're in their element, and whatever's in there, well, you know, it's playtime, you know, whatever. And so you can't, you can't be mad at whatever's going to grab you. And I've seen catfish the size of boats. I'm joking. Not even. Mm-hmm. I'm not even joking. Um, Seriously, your, your, your traditions of pounds. I saw eight hundred pound. Uh, uh, oh yeah, before. I've seen yeah. them the size of boats, bass boats. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievable. Here in Lake Travis, Lake Travis nice. is like. So how far are you from Lake Texoma, Yahola? So that's uh, south. West, really south Oklahoma. So I'm, I currently live in the Oklahoma City metro, but I'm I'm mm. from northeast Oklahoma. So I would say we're from four to five hours. Have you been down, down there? there? Huh? Have you been down there? I have never been to Lake Lake Texoma. Um, the waters I usually you know frequent when I when I did would would be Lake Eufaula, uh, Illinois River, and then Ten Quarter Lake in, in Tal- outside of Tahlequah. Yeah. Well, it, it, it Lake Texoma, and I don't know if you know this, but there are a lot of stories, a lot of traditions that are of like Bigfoot and these werewolf looking dogman creatures. And we've gotten multiple reports of that. And we've even talked to a couple Choctaw. Uh, one is a police officer. He worked at the casino and we got to know him and he sat down and he talked with us. And it was, a, it was, it was me and Anthony and, and Tony and my brother and, he was very forthcoming about some things. And so they have their own traditions of shapeshifters and things like that. And uh, he told me, he says, if you want to go and do some exploring, he goes, Lake Texoma right there. But he gave me a warning and he told me specifically one spot, which I, I think we probably, I don't know, Anthony, what you think. We probably shouldn't say it on the show because people yeah. run over there. Yeah. They'll be over there and somebody will be getting eaten by. Yeah whatever <laughs> and then it'll be our fault or they'll trespass <laughs> this has happened so many times um but this so he told us he said he gave us a specific spot he said and it's like a little bit of an island you know but now he said if the water recedes you can walk there but if not it's sort of like a little cove and he said that there is where you're going to find what you're looking for if you're looking for these creatures and there is a hole there that's covered up by the water at different times of the year, depending on how much rain they have. But then when it's not, you know, and he believes as the traditions were taught to him by his people, that that is a place you don't go. It's a very dark place. And he said, you will find these creatures that they're there, they're out there. And some of them are in the water. And I always thought it was strange that, multiple, multiple uh, types of, of natives here in this country and all over the world, even with the uh, Laotian, they have a, a tradition. Uh, a friend of mine who's Laotian was telling me about it. And it's and it's not just them, the Polynesians, you know. Um, and in particular, down in New Zealand, the uh, the Maori, 
And they all believe in this panther type creature that comes mm -hmm. up out of the river or water and will grab you and do things to you. And I, th I think it's strange that it's uh, not really, uh, you know, the jaguar does love the water. We've all seen videos of them killing and eating caiman, which for all intents and purposes are small crocodiles. And they're mean. And, and these jaguars handle them like they ain't nothing. And I've seen jaguars jump up into trees and knock down birds. It's, it's unbelievable how agile and tough they are. And they're just the right amount of size, so they're not too heavy. They can climb a tree. They're the third largest cat. The tiger, ironically, you know, <laughs> the tiger is the largest cat. The second is the, is the lion, and then the third is the jaguar. And there's jaguars all over North and South America. Um, but these, these jaguars can climb I want to trees. show you guys of, of one fishing. Fishing. Oh, um, wow. In the water. Yeah, there you go. So fish in its claw, so. Pretty crazy. A lot of people will say that, Matt, that that's what that's from, that that is the tradition of, of the, that's where the water panther comes from. But I'll say this, it's, it's not just this cat swimming in the water because it's all over the world. You know, there's Vietnamese, mm -hmm. Laotian and, and Cambodian beliefs and, you know, where these jungle areas are, they believe these cats come up out of the water and, and they will snatch you up and then take you back down into the depths. Um, so we got the snake that does it. We got the panther that does it. And <laughs> so going into the water obviously is a risky and scary prospect and it always has been. So tiger, let me ask you this. Has anybody given you a story, uh, concerning, uh, these types of creatures, like doing anything like that, or that you can say, Hey, you know what, this is something that's happened that you can point to as like, you know, the Cherokee tradition. You know, when it comes to water, you know, um, no one, I think one thing that I think no one really talks about, you know, everybody talks about lakes, rivers, you know, streams, things like that. Um, I had a guy reach out to me about um, maybe six months ago. He fishes in this pond and he was deathly afraid that LP would come and get his, ch come and get his kids. Cause I had, uh, one thing about LP is they, you know, they will, they will lure your children off if you're not careful. You know, you always got to, you know, be mindful of that. But, you know, when it comes to these, these, uh, springs, like natural springs, um, one thing that, you know, I have been told growing up is when you see a spring, that's where the LP are. You know, they, they hang out around there. That's their water source. That's their, um, that would be their, no, I wouldn't say like habitat, but I guess that'd be a word that I'd use. But, um, but I've had people, um, you know, reach out to me about, you know, snake stories. Um, there was a, there's an entity that um, is not really talked about, but it's Muskogee Creek on my, on my Muskogee Creek side. They talk about these turtles um, and they're real little, like real little penny size. And they spin real fast. And I can't exactly remember what the legend around that is, um, but I've had people, uh, you know, family talk about those things. Another uh, thing that I've, I've been told uh, about the water is, and I can't exactly remember, I've been told this one time, and it was one time only, I think it really spooked my, my, my family who, who saw this thing, but it, was, it, it came out of a fog, basically. There was a fog over the land, and there was a pond sitting, you know, kind of right, right underneath that fog, and they look over as they're walking down this road, and look over and there's this this little like you see a little like furry thing and they looked and they're like well it's, what is that and as they got and got closer now they weren't too far from me it started to grow into and i describe it as like a water bear but that don't sound but that's may not be what that they saw um but basically this furry thing grew and grew and grew and got bigger in size as they got closer to that uh to that water and that water that they were at uh, that water would usually like, uh, you know, it, it would flood, but it would recede just as quickly as it flooded. And it wasn't like there was a ditch there. It just, the water would like flood and then it would just retract. So there was something in that water. Um, 
I mean, there's just there's just a there's a there's a lot of different you know entities, and I'm probably missing a few of them just right off the top of my head. But, um, but that was one thing that I was always told growing up is when you see a spring. And my parents here where I'm at now, um, they have a they had a natural spring that was on down the road or down down the hill from us where I'm sitting right here off to my, I guess it'd be y'all's right, my left. Um, but you know. We've had missing time out here, you know. It's just, it's a, it's a hodgepodge of, of different things that I've experienced, and you know, you, you, you name a topic and we, we can go. You know, that's just, that's, that's just kind of how it is. Well, I'll name, I'll name a topic. What about the little people? I know that that's a tradition in the Cherokee. We can talk about that. You know, they're, um, excuse me. Um, so a story was told to me, and I'll, and I'll give. Uh, background after the story um but this is kind of a funny story but there was a guy who was real overweight real heavy and this is back at uh church grounds and i think in yufala area maybe somewhere else i can't exactly remember but this guy uh told the story about a time when uh everybody was asleep and i guess this real big heavy set guy fell asleep outside and they woke up and they saw him basically he was hovering off the ground you know, probably half a foot, but it was like ants. They were carrying, those LP were carrying him, you know, wherever they were going. But there's all those stories. And you know, one thing that, you know, growing up, I grew up in, in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, and I was real big at Merle Home Park in Tahlequah. It's in Park Hill, really. And LP, they... Uh, what they do is they mess with you. You know, they will send you off the trail or they will they will knock you off your where, where you're supposed to go. And, you know, there, there's just so many stories I could tell about them. But, you know, they, uh, and this is something too, I'm not trying to spook anybody out, but usually you can tell they're around. You'll see a perfect circle in your, you know, it could be mushrooms. Sometimes it's kind of certain type of grass. But if you ever see that, you know, in in your yard or in your, you know, if you, you got a wooded area, you know, mushrooms, if it's in a perfect circle, you know they're around. Um, you know, one thing that I always, you know, people have asked me, you know, how do I, how do I protect myself? I said, just leave them alone. At the end of the day, you know, you, you mess with them, you know, they'll, they'll mess with you. That's how that works. Um, you know, consequences for your actions and a story that comes to mind um, growing up, my grandma, she was, uh, she went to a boarding school when she was a little, a little girl and, you know, she had a real tough life and, 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 you know, it's kind of, it's real sad to think about her, but she told this story and she only told us a few times and she would say, you know, they lived in this house out in Bunch, Oklahoma, Northeast Oklahoma. And that house was so raggedy, man. They didn't have no, they didn't have no door. It was like, it was a shack, basically, you know, blanket over the, over the door. And they were just living real hard, you know, and she told this story. Uh, one night she was laying there. She's a little girl. And she thought she heard somebody come in, you know, like pattering of the feet, kind of. And she looked over and it was an LP. And her, her aunt would always tell her, hey, you know, make sure that you don't, you know, disturb this plate, you know. And, you know, the, we're, we're basically, how it was told to me, you know, I've, I've heard different types of this story, uh, you know, from different family members. I guess she, she would tell them different aspects of the story. And, and essentially, you know, there was, uh, basically she saw LP taking that food and, her aunt told her that they built a, that house that they were in was, was on their trail. And one thing that I was always told growing up is when you're, you'll realize you're on their trail um, because they'll, they'll mess with you. But, you know, you always have to, you know, I was, you know, I was always told to leave things better than you, than you had it. Because, you know, if you go through their trail and you start cutting stuff and you're, you know, wiping your shoes on stuff or peeing on things or, you know, doing all types of stuff out there, you know, they will get angry at you. They will get mad at you because you're disrespecting their home. 
and they're just disrespecting their, uh, you know, their way of life. Um, a, a one story that I was told uh, growing up was, or another story I was told, I've been told so many stories, um, but I had a relative of mine who would mess around, and they knew that they they knew a certain part of this of this land was their land, and they're messing around out there, throwing stuff all over the place, and. Uh, basically, they had to. They had, to, you know, they they got back home and and uh, they were like, oh yeah, you know, there was there were some weird things going on around the house, and they they asked them. I said, well, where what'd y'all do today, or you know, where y'all been? And they said, oh, we was out here. And they said, well, you need to go back and fix what you need what you need to fix, or you need to take back whatever you took. Because sometimes if you take things, and this is something I'll say when it comes to like people getting arrowheads. You know, a famous story that's going around here in the last year was the, the country singer Hardy. He took, he, out in Tennessee, that's, you know, Cherokee, Cherokee country, old, old Cherokee country. And, you know, Cherokees were out there and I can't remember who else was out there. But, you know, they, they, you know, arrowheads are found out there in those creeks and, you know, you dig them up. Well, Hardy, the country singer, took those arrowheads and he had crap going on in his house crazy. He said he couldn't even, you know, he was so shook up about that. But that's what I say when you when you take things that, that belong somewhere, you know those things will follow you home. Uh, so I'm being a little long winded, but you know that's just kind of how those things shake out. You're, no, you're not being long winded. Say what you have to say. What's going on, Matt? What do you want? I was just going to ask. I'm um, talking about bringing things home. Now, obviously, you know we, we could get and the ghost things were not. In terms of of things uh, revolving around Native American uh, legend, lore, and obviously truths, what you know is is uh, given to you as you've grown up, or or some of the elders' uh, information that you would give people like us to keep things like that from following you home. What what would be told? Uh, yeah, I've been asked this question before, and like I said, I'm by no means an expert. You know, there's elders mm -hmm. out there who who know better than I do. But what I've, you know, what I would say to people who who go out and do these investigations, um, you got to make sure you 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 are protected. And you know, I, I mentioned this earlier. Everyone can be protected in their own way. You know, there's always, you know, I, I mentioned earlier, a, there is a true higher power, and you know what you believe. You know, you do those things. Now, as far as, you know, like if you took something or, you know, if, if, you know, if, if something were to happen where, you know, you got followed home, um, a lot of times if you just return it and, and, and if you're out there, for instance, if you're, I've had, I've, I've been Bigfoot hunting, um, you know, a lot of times in my life, and I, don't, I hate saying hunting because I'm not really hunting. I'm just kind of looking, looking around. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of things, a lot of times, uh, what I would do is I would talk to them. I would say, you know, I'm just here. We're here. We're, we're dumb kids. You know, I would just be having a conversation. And I had some some non-native friends be like, what are you doing? You just out here talking to yourself, walking around. And, you know, because those spirits are real. You know, they're very real. And, you know, when I was at Merle Home Park, I disrespected them. Uh, and I'll tell this story. You know, and it, it goes along with the Bigfoot, I would say, but not really Bigfoot. But, you know, I, I was out there messing around at Merle Home Park, and, and there's a story that my grandpa used to tell me about. Uh, I think it was either him or a relative. Um, they would hoot three times. And he would basically hoot the three times and then you'd hear laughter. It'd be like laughter. Like, you know, uh, I don't want to do it cause it's, it's creepy, but it's like owl laughter, you know, an owl kind of hoots, but it's like a laughter, mm -hmm. but it was coming from all in the trees. Well, I just, I decided to do that that night and these things, they, whatever this was, I think it was the, the evil, the, the one that, the one that we don't talk about, the one that, um, uh, the spirit that you don't bother and they take your mind you know they 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 do these things to you and i hooted that third time and out from underneath that bridge we heard a roar it was like a 
I would equate it to like, you know, when somebody, you know, has like a really high pitched, like if you screamed into a mic as loud as you could, but it was like the bass on it was crazy. Like the bass was just so booming. And I remember kind of blacking out. And I remember that night I had to, you know, I had to uh, kind of come to my senses because it took me for a second. It took me, um, I blacked out. I don't remember anything from that drive, running to the car all the way to Muskogee, which is about 30 minutes to 25 miles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to, I'm being very long winded once again, but I like, but you, you ask that question and I start in my mind, start going to these places of what not to do. Um, mm -hmm. And one of them is, is taunting um, or, uh, you know, you know, peeing on certain things like, you know, being that's, you know, in any, any culture, that's disrespect. You peeing on somebody, you know, if it's like me walking into Josh's house and just peeing in his closet for no reason, you know, something crazy. Like, <laughs> wow. You're not be mad, but, you know, so it's just, there's a lot of things that can be done. And, and first and foremost, you know, I, I, I do smoke off. So you know, I, I'm not saying weed, I'm saying you know, cedar, sweet grass, yeah. things like that. I do do those things. And also do, you know, I talk to the, the, high, the higher power, the true power. Um, and uh, that's kind of what, what I do. You it's know, funny that you, that you said, oh, go ahead, Matt. I'm sorry, Josh. I didn't mean to cut you off. I, I just wanted to finish with, you know, you're talking about burning specific types of things, uh, cleansing, protection. You know, you hear people talk about saging a house, um, you know, out of all of the things, again, and I'm, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. This is, you know, knowledge I don't know about in, in, in the Native American lores. And the, what what have you learned is one of the more powerful uh, cleansing type of smokes or, or uh, you know, natural things to burn? So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll tell this, you know, so a couple, you know, couple months ago one thing that I, I i'm very aware of is when my when things in my life start to kind of go in a certain direction and you know i was always told growing up you know sometimes you know no disrespect to my people but you know we kind of jealous of each other you know we do get mad at each other you know i don't have this you know I don't, and that could be all that's really all people but i'm just speaking from you know my experience and you know, there could be some someone out there that who you don't know, but they but they want to put that on you. And you know what I did is basically smoke the dog mess out of my house. You know, I that house was smelling like dang cedar for like four days after. And cedar strong in the Lebanese culture as well. Yeah, I was about to place. say that. Yeah. yeah, that's a very big one. And they also believe not only the cedars of Lebanon are, are very important. They were, they, they were there from the time of the Phoenicians when they, and one of the things that they learned about cedar, you know, from the ancients is that it's an insect repellent. Mm -hmm. And a lot of traditions, like I said before, not to you know, beat a dead horse, but the spider is said to represent a spirituality. And in, and in the jinn, which predates Islam. A lot of people think it's an Islamic thing. No, the Islamic peoples cover it, but the jinn are actually, it's an Arabic thing. And it even mm -hmm. goes back further into the Persian culture and the Zoroastrian culture. They were basically Ahura Mazda, or what's his name? Anger Manu. Anger Manu was the flip side to Ahura Mazda. He was the one that you would go, it was, that's the first uh, we've ever heard of hell or heaven was in the Zoroastrian culture. And when you would, would die, you would walk a, walk a tightrope. And if you fell to the left, you went to hell. You fell to the right, you went to heaven. And uh, Anga, Maz, Ma, uh, Anga Manu, who was the shadow, basically, of uh, Hura Mazda, he was the, the bad guy, the villain. And one of the things that he you could repel him with was cedar. So they would actually make trips to this place that at that time was ruled by what they called Bedouin barbarians, um, who, who eventually became the Phoenicians. And they would trade very valuable things that they would get off the Silk Road, like jade for, mm -hmm. for cedar. And the cedar was just so that they could burn it, just like Tiger was saying. And it was, like he said, smoke off. And they would actually mix that with another type of incense and they would burn it in their houses in the Zoroastrian culture. They, they have a fire 
they call the eternal flame that has never been put out supposedly since I think like 3000 BC, wow. which is crazy to think about. And as far back as we know, and of course that would coincide with the end of what I believe was the Dorpa Yuga. And yep. then it goes, that was the flood, the antediluvian. <clears throat> and another thing about the Cherokee people, I'll say this, I, I said, I don't know a lot about it because I don't want to, say that I know what, what Tiger knows because it's not my culture. And I don't like when people go, yeah, well, I know all about the Africans. Blah, 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 blah. Well, that's a huge continent and you know all about all of the Africans. Yes. Okay. Let's let you tell it. But I just, I say this, um, what I do know is the Cherokee, I believe, and this is my belief that they interbred and that particular region of Tennessee and a little bit of Kentucky, they found coins they're places where Cherokee inhabited, and they go all the way back to like Crete. Now, when I say Crete, I don't mean like when the Greeks, you know, in Alexander's day. I'm talking before Thermopylae. I'm talking like six, seven hundred BC. Um, why is that? How did they get those coins and those mounds that they built? They in different places. I think that their their culture has got more than just like, oh, they came from the Bering Strait from Asia. I don't, don't, I do not believe that. I think that they came from the East. That is my belief. And I do believe, and this is going to sound really weird, but Matt, give a profile, stand straight. Like, okay. Now, if you look at Tiger and you look at Matt, you actually may have some very similar genetics because the Phoenicians were seafaring people. And I believe that they came to the new world. That is my belief. And I know a million people will probably message me tomorrow proselytizing to me why I am wrong. And that even though my, you know, whatever, that, that I'm stupid. Okay. But there are reasons why I believe that I don't have time to get into it in this show, but I believe that that's what they are. I believe that them, the Chickasaw and the Choctaw, because the Chaldean, Chickasaw, Choctaw, Cherokee, it all sounds very similar. And I believe that they came from a mixture of Chaldean and, and Phoenician. And they were seafaring people just like the Greeks were. And they traded very heavily with them. So it's very weird how the Zoroastrians of the Persian culture, the Lebanese, they take cedar and they burn it and they smoke the house with cedar. Um, that is something that Yehola is saying he does too. Um, and in fact, my grandmother did that. She was Comanche and she would cedar because cedar was an insect repellent and she would burn it outside to keep the mosquitoes away. It was something just, she wasn't doing it for spiritual re Well, then again, who knows? I didn't really understand much she said. So, but she was doing it, you know, on a regular basis. So, and then you look again, how serious and, 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 uh, the, the Lebanese are about, the, the the power and and you know there is mythology about the cedar tree and everything. Look at the flag of Lebanon, right? Smack dab in the center is a cedar tree. Yeah, and yeah. the cedars. Th there's even a, a legend about the cedars that say that they will stand until the day of judgment. You know, which is like that's what the Lebanese people believe. Um, I personally, I don't put any stock in what they say. They're a bunch of savages. Like they, I don't care. I'm, I'm joking, Matt. You know what I'm saying? I have a lot of respect for Lebanese culture because I worked with a lot of them for a long time. The average Lebanese speaks five languages. The average European speaks three. Well, the, how did they get this statistic? Three and a half. How do you speak three and a half languages? Like I only speak half of that language. I don't speak. I don't know the verbs. I just know the nouns. But, hey, yeah, three, but three and a quarter over here. Three, yeah. three and a quarter languages. They speak though. different languages. Yeah. As but but the I like I said, the average American doesn't speak one. And somebody told right. me how many languages do you speak? I speak six. I don't pretend to speak more than that. Somebody pointed out yesterday when I was on Blondes and Booze that I don't speak Hebrew. I was like, I bet I speak more than you do, and hmm. I could probably read it better than you because I'm learning it because I want to know the true biblical. You know, I want to know what it says because I want to find the true one living God, and that's my quest. But we're not talking about that today either. The cedars, <laughs> the cedar trees are also very highly prized for the wood because, like, if you want to build a post for fence and ranching, I know it's this. Not. Ranch, yeah. you go out and you get cedar and you chop it. And I've chopped cedar and it ain't easy. 
And then, you know, you use them as fence posts, you know. And so now that I'm actually uh, going to start uh, putting cattle on my my farm. Um, it bugs away. It's hard to rot, yeah. I remember. I was about and to say bugs. Yeah, that's Bugs it, don't like big, it. Bugs no, don't. That's no. a big thing here in Mexico is to use cedar as well for that very reason because of the hu high humidity, you know, mm -hmm. and, and all the bugs. Like the termites are crazy down here. So, mm -hmm. yeah, cedar is a good one. We yeah. had a, 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 I'm sorry, I, I keep interrupting you. I apologize. Um, we are you talking wanted, to me. Yeah, Josh. Oh, I don't, don't worry about it. Just say what you got to say, guys. We had, uh, in, in the house we used to live at uh, on the north side of Youngstown, um, my uh, mother grew up in the house next door, but her dad, uh, when she was very young, um, before he had a stroke and passed, actually built a in the basement you know which normally basements older houses you, you have uh you know moisture problems and this and that and he built like storage closets and they were cedar and n no problem nothing out of everything in that basement every other kind of wood would have signs of maybe you know through the years problems from moisture as an old house that cedar closet dry bone nothing wrong with it Perfect. So it's just again, you know. But you know that that, that they sell uh, cedar anointing oil from Lebanon. It's really big in the Levant, uh, and people love the smell they of it. it all over. It's an anointing oil that they use, and it's used in the Orthodox Christian faith and in the in the Muslim faith. So it's a very it's a very important thing. And <laughs> so Yehola, um, how did you get involved in in and saging with, well, I say saging, but, but you know what I'm saying? Like saging with, with cedar. Um, that's, you know, that's always kind of been in our family. Um, you know, I've had uncles, you know, who, who have done that. Um, you know, my family, um, we're out of, let's say my family's out of you follow my Creek side and their church. And one thing that's, you know, real different no, I guess really not different, but you're not supposed to mix um, the grounds, so ceremonial grounds in church. And that was always a big thing um, growing up. And, you know, obviously, you know, if you're you're around people that practice those grounds, the ceremonial grounds, you know, you're going to, you know, try to test that a little bit. And, you know, for me, um I'm not, I would not say that I'm like tradish, you know, that's kind of the slang tradish, you know, I practice a lot of things and, and I, you know, I, I do certain things that's taught to me. Um, you know, one thing that, uh, you know, you don't want to do is, is, you know, if you don't know something, you know, you always got to ask or, you know, make sure that you're doing it right. Cause you know, I, I was traveling in, in Arkansas, uh, probably two years ago now. And, I had to get a good kick out of it. And you guys are talking about all these different, uh, you know, ways that, you know, this cedar is, is, is done. And they, uh, they were selling bundles of cedar for like 20 bucks. And it was like, get, you know, get the spiritual anointment that you want. And the shot and the you know, shop wasn't even native, you know, it's just, you know, but they had the native <laughs> symbols on it and they, yeah. you know, like the, the feathers and, and, and things like that. And, and, you know, that, I always thought that was kind of comical that, everybody kind of equates cedar to, to being native, which, you know, I guess here in America, that, I mean, that can be so, but, you know, I kind of, I got into it uh, probably here in the last probably six, five, you know, five, six years. Uh, you know, my, my, my mom's side, she's Cherokee. And so, like I said, you got to be church or, or ceremonial grounds on, on certain things. And, and we went church. And so for a lot of time, in my life and this is something that I, i'm i'm trying to, to be better about is, is trying to to learn as much as i can that's really why i have the podcast i've re, you know i talked to a little, different natives from different nations and and you know different things like that and learning you know how to do things correctly because that's one thing that uh, you know i used to be you know growing up me, me and my, my younger brother were uh could speak cherokee could could write cherokee um and, you know, we learned those things growing up. We learned how to basket. We, we learned the traditional, making flutes, um, making marbles. Marbles is a game that's played, playing chunky, um, doing these different, you know, traditional games. And, you know, hog meat is huge. Um, but, you know, as I got older, 
you know, you kind of fall out of that. I think it's just trying to discover who you are, I guess, really is what it comes down to. You know, and I kind of went into, you know, athletics and, and, and that type of thing. And, and, and as I've gotten older, you know, you're, I'm losing elders. You know, we, we lost, you know, elders and during COVID. We lost elders after COVID. We lost elders due to certain things. And, and you know, my grandpa passed in 2021. And, and that, you know, had kind of really fast-tracked, you know, kind of my thought on – trying to get back, you know, trying to, trying to learn these things and, and, uh, and trying to, just, you know, just like I said, leave, leave the world, you know, better than, than I, than I got it. And so, but cedar is like I said, cedar is, uh, is used in that it's sweet grass, um, you know, sage. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm really based with, with cedar and, you know, it's kind of funny. I'm talking about doctor. Um, I'm talking about doctor, um, doctored things is what I'll, is what we call it doc it, it being doctored so the cedar will be doctored mm-hmm. um you know i have a, a story about things being doctored and trying to heal you um, i had a real bad sciatic issue my sophomore year in, in in high school and my aunt who was uh she's muskogee creek you know she was like uh, let me let me let me try to help you out let me let me doctor this and she so basically she took this tube of uh it's kind of funny. I think about now, but it was she. She went and had it uh, had it doctored. This tube of this icy hot or some type of stuff that makes your basically numbs out your your you know your muscle groups. And I had a buddy of mine who he's he never listened, man. I tell him I, he was Muskogee Creek too. So I was like, dude, come on, like you you know you can't be using this. And I had it in my bag and I put it in a secret compartment so nobody would use it because so it wouldn't be any anything for someone to reach in your bag and use it. Well. He put it on his hamstring and he tore his hamstring because I think that was not for him. You know, that's what, you know, that's what, uh, I was always told growing up, if things are for you, they'll, they'll reveal themselves to you. And you know, that, you know, that being doctored and it wasn't, for, it wasn't meant for him, you know, and you know, as I've gotten older, when I graduated from high school, I believe, you know, the highest honor um, that you can get from an elder and I, I, maybe I won't say highest, but, you know, you can get blanketed too. You know, you get those blankets. But, you know, I got, uh, I was given, I believe I'm the only, I'm the oldest, I'm the oldest, but I believe I'm the only grand, maybe grandson, maybe nephew. Um, but I got a, uh, but I got a, a feather and a feather is very important. Um, you know, different stories about feathers. You know, my mom, she, uh, you know, she, she works, you know, for the, uh, you know, for, el- or not for elders, for veterans. And, you know, she was going to see a, a lady who knew the, who knew those things and she had a feather and a feather was, you know, sitting on the, the mantle. And anytime someone would come in the room, if, if that person was, had good intentions for her, the feather would stay, you know, how it's supposed to be. But if that person had bad intentions, that feather would curl up and wilt. Wow, and so you know, I was given I was given a, a, a feather, um, and I was always told don't let anybody touch it. So it's sitting in my at my house in Oklahoma City, um, in a, in a in a picture frame. Um, I had a knucklehead friend, man. I said, and I had it on a mantle because you know it's it's for protection in, in some aspects. Mm-hmm. And you know, he went up there and he was like, "Hey, man, that's a cool looking feather." And he went to grab it and take it out of the case. And I said, don't do that. And I had to like swipe it out of his hand. Oh, man. Man. Who knows what would have happened. He, he was going to take it out of the case? Yeah, he was trying. Well, he, it was in a picture frame, one of those. Yeah, of, yeah. And yeah, he was He was like, hey, that's cool. And he was trying to take it out. And, yeah. Oh, my God. Like some, that, people just, uh, some people just like to cross some lines. Um, I, I was going to say, like, like here in Mexico, one thing that we use uh, um, – for, for cleansing is, of course, Palo Santo, but there's also um, Copal. Copal is a big thing that is used down here, uh, which is like tree resin. It's, uh, it's smell like? Oh, amazing. I, I, I cannot tell you what it smells like. It smells like Copal. Uh, mm. you, you can buy Copal incense anywhere, but to actually get the chunks of Copal, you know, and then you, you can put them in... Uh, you can put them in and burn them kind of thing. So you need like a, like a holder to hold them. Usually there's a lot of the, the local Mayans will use like a, like a clay goblet or something like that. And then they will, uh, you know, get, get some charcoal, put it in there and light it up and then they'll burn it. And it, it, it's, it's amazing. It really gives off a lot of smoke, a lot of smoke. Um, 
but I was saying, yeah, you were you were saying uh, that. Sorry, the dogs here. The noises here tonight are just crazy. It's going I off. Um, the noises from there. I, it, it makes me <laughs> wish I was. It there. makes it more authentic, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so like you know, for, for for smudging, yes, sage is a big thing. Like you're saying, uh, cedar. Another thing that we would use a lot, uh, and this was my uh, my teacher who was a, a Blackfoot. Uh, she would uh, recommend you know cedar, cedar of course, but also mugwort. Mugwort was like. Like the extra strength, you know, like you, you're taking a Tylenol with uh, with sage, but you want to do something extra strength, then use mugwort. Uh, sweet so. grass, what he's talking about, but it's also called buffalo grass. Well, sweet yeah. grass was used to appease the spirits. Um, you know, it's kind of like it's kind of more of like a, a thank you for the spirits. You you would, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, you would cleanse the house with saging, um, and then after you would go after with sweet grass as a as like an offering. Yeah, and, and it's funny because sweetgrass is actually found, like, not just in America. It's found in, like, I think, northern, northern Europe and in Asia. And a lot of people believe that it was brought across the Bering Strait, and that's how it ended up in the United States in, in the North America by the natives that originally came here. But I think it could have come both ways. I think that there were several migrations that ended up, you know, being what the natives are, you know, their, their, their history, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and you're right, whenever you, after you're done and it's even called sweet grass because it's like the nice one, it's like yes. one of them gets rid of and the other one is kind of like an appeasement or whatever. Yeah. In particular, and what we were talking about earlier with the, uh, the little people, um, that was, it's very important a lot to a lot of different cultures that that's what you do. You give that, you give them that you give them offerings. If, if, yeah. Yeah, if you give them the bad one, then they're going to give you the pimp mm -hmm. hand. <laughs> yeah. it's, I and, mean, and that's what they say, you know, the little people, you know, uh, um, Matt, you, Matt, you were saying about what does it smell like? I totally forgot this. So, you know, the incense they use in Catholic, like in church, I don't like, yeah. cause I was a, a Catholic, yeah. they use Copel. That is what they oh, use. Okay. Yeah, oh, well, so, I know exactly what that smells like. Yeah, yes, but that's more of like a, a refined, I guess. But if you get the actual like raw, it's it is amazing. You know, I want to say to Tiger, um, when you brought up the feathers, I perked up because um, I had a really incredible uh, experience at Beaver Creek State Park and. Uh, Ohio, about 40 minutes where I live. I live in the Youngstown area. In fact, uh, just a, a plug here real quick, just to give everyone the idea and understand what I'm speaking of. The second video I've ever dropped on Planet 412, it's, it's, you won't, you wouldn't believe what happened at Beaver Creek. Uh, at Beaver Creek State Park, I, I not only got an EVP of a, a Sasquatch, but the next day I went back to this campsite by myself and I had some really crazy things happen and I closed my eyes and I, I did positive mindset. You were talking about mindsets and going in, asking permission to be there. And, um, you know, when I asked permission, Hey, Melissa, awesome to see a Ohio person here. Um, one of the things that occurred the next day is, when I opened my eyes and I had them closed for a good 15, 20 minutes, right between my feet and on my video, on my second video, I have everything. I took pictures of everything right between my feet. I found out was a, an eagle feather, a giant eagle feather. And I've been told when you're gifted feathers, that is a, a great honor. Uh, uh, you know, uh, your thoughts on, on specifically eagle feathers. Do you know anything about that? And specifically, yeah, so eagle, yeah, so eagle feathers is part of that. Um, there's a few other birds you could use, um, but usually, most times, like I had somebody uh here recently tell me a story, um, about how anytime they knew that they're so they had a child that was lost, um, had, who had passed due to illness. And one thing that they always talked about and always one thing that they always, uh, you know, kind of like uh, gifted each other was feathers. And, you know, that's one thing that, that especially if you're out in the woods and something, you know, people, people have said before that, you know, oh, you know, I was walking across and, you know, a, a feather just walked, you know, kind of floated down in front of me. Mm -hmm. You know, that could be anything, 
uh, from somebody protecting you, like it could be just a, a spirit or anything really like that. Because I know this person that was telling me this is that every time that their their daughter was around, um, it would kind of remind her, and it would be like a it'd be. And I can't remember exactly what feather it was, but it was um, some type of uh, not like a dove, but something along kind of a little or no, it was a red jay. It was a, a a red a cardinal or whatever you whatever they they you know you use it, but they but that feather would you know fall down in front of them, and wow. you know it, it's that's one thing about you know about a lot of this things that I've talked about tonight is they're all loosely connected in some form or fashion, um, you know especially with cultures uh, you know with uh, you know spiritually like it's all connected in some form or fashion and. And with feathers, you know, especially if you had something, you know, eagle feathers is one of the highest, you know, I would say if someone gave you eagle feather, you know, they, they probably think pretty highly of you. That's right. And, you know, as a form of protection, you can always also use it as, you know, and you can just flaunt it. So a lot of, I know a lot of people put it on their hats. Um, like they'll have a, a Oklahoma Sooners, Boomer Sooner hat. And have that feather on it. Showing off I pride. protected it. I, I put it in a protective case. And yeah. it doesn't get touched. Because somebody gave that to you. That's what, that's how it's always been kind of phrased to me. Well, that was, was actually, it's a pretty common uh, native name from multiple different tribes. Um, Eagle Feather. I mean, that's that was that's a name that they, they were you're given. Of course, people don't realize this either. And of course, there are a lot of different natives. But like, let's just say for Pawnee, for example, or Blackfoot. The, the, and uh, they, they in particular, they, your name that you're given as a child is not the name you have when you get older. Like they may call you like stinky beaver you know, when you're a kid. And then when you get older, it becomes something a little more, you know, like a fitting of what a man or woman is. Um, so the, the name is not always the same. It, and then it depends on what you do and how you do it, what your name becomes. You sort of earn your name. It's not something that stays with you from birth. Uh, not in the traditional sense. A, a lot of natives are that way. I, I, somebody made a, a comment here, guys, and I wanted to say something about this here. Jojo says, apparently it's bad luck to keep peacock feathers inside. A superstitious belief, perhaps. I will explain that. Um, okay. this is. I don't want to be long-winded or whatever because this is, show is about you guys, but I want to say this. The, the peacock feather is considered very lucky by several cultures and in Zoroastrian, like I said earlier, that's funny because we were talking about them. Uh, and in the land where Matt is from, it's both. And I'll explain that. The Indian culture, they believe that it is very, very, very lucky to have a peacock uh, feather in your house, to have peacock feathers. But there is one tribe of people from the, the Levant, which are the Kurdish. Now the Kurdish have a type of tribe that, that is a part of their, um, you know, culture, but they, most of them are either Christian or they're uh, Zoroastrian or, or they're, you know, they're Muslim. They live in like four different countries. They're just kind of scattered, you know, they don't have their own land because when the, when the European colonialists divided up the land, it was, they didn't care what tribe was where. And so the, Peacock God was was worshipped by the Yazidi. Now, to the average Christian or Muslim, whatever, that's considered a heretic. That's considered pagan. It's very bad. But it's even worse if you're a Christian or a Muslim, and I'll tell you why. Because the peacock God was Lucifer. But they don't look at Lucifer as the bad guy. They believe that he was gifted this world and forgiven for his rebellion by the one most high. And he was allowed to take over this world, which kind of mirrors the Gnostic belief that Yaldaba created us. And then he was usurped by another deity that was actually at a higher level than him because he was not good. But he forgave Yaldaba and because he was ignorant and allowed him to have control to a certain degree. This is all very esoteric and weird, but the Christians, in particular the British, when they took the ports in, in uh, uh, India, they saw these people using the peacock feathers, and they were considered all to be Hindu pagans. 
And so they said that anything that has to do with that is not good. So if you have those in your house, then you're a pagan, apostate, whatever. And that is something that kind of spread throughout Europe. Now, the ancient Greeks did believe that the peacock feather was a very uh, lucky symbol. But through modern European colonialism, and to some degree Asian colonialism, because they did it too, they turned it into a bad thing because it was being used throughout the Levant all the way to the Indus Valley and into India. And so anything that was their traditions, much like with the Native Americans, they were scolded for it and told, this is not good, You whatever you're doing that's not canon, biblical, whatever, it's bad. And it's pagan, and it should be done away with. Mm. Uh, in fact, I was told by a preacher one time that I had uh, not an eagle feather, but I had a, a turkey feather. And he was like, where did you find that? And I said, I found it in the barn, whatever. And I, and I had it in my hat. I mean, we were out on a little hike or whatever. It was a, a church camp. What do you call it? The Christian camp, whatever. And he took it and he threw it down. He goes, we don't do any of this paganism, none of that, you know, feathers and all that's bad. And he grabbed me. He goes, you understand? That's bad. And I'm like, okay, fine. It's bad. It's a bad thing, whatever. But because it has, if it has anything to do with anything that's not canonical, then that's it. It's heretical. And so, yes, that Jojo is, I hope that explains to you about the peacock feathers. Um, the eye of the peacock feather is another thing too. It supposedly is the eye that it wards off the evil eye. And if you look at Kurdish uh, tradition, in particular in Turkey, you go to the bazaars or you go to any of the plazas or the markets, you can buy those, those uh, fed those peacock eyes. But of course, there again, the average Muslim or Christian is going to tell you that's horrible, it's evil because it's not in their books. It's as simple as that. So I'm going to explain that. Didn't want to get ill, you know, whatever. Because as of late, I have been getting attacked by people who claim to be Christians, but they don't like that I they don't like that I tell the truth. They prefer <laughs> that I lie. So, but I'm not gonna do that, but you know, so that they'll be happy. Too bad. This show is about finding the truth and facts. And if you don't like it, well, then you're more than welcome to build a canoe and go on <laughs> down the river and see if Falak attacks you. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I think that was great information. I was I, I was gift, I was I was gifted a peacock feather by a, a local here in Mexico, and uh, that means you're going to die. He's after you. That's a that's a witch doctor. I knew it. <laughs> well, it was a bruja. Then it's it was a bruja. Not, not a bruja. Right. Then it's then yeah. it's, it's right out. It, you're you're done. It's, it's, you're as good as dead. We gotta, we gotta get a countdown after him now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Go get him some cedar mat, and hey, yeah. uh, Yehola, get him some sweet grass because he's in trouble. No, I mean, it was a little bit right. Wednesday that gave you that, didn't he? He's like, yeah. Uh, right. Hey, it's 11.33. Hey, let's make sure, you know, we're going to count down the days right now. See how many days he lasts. On this. <laughs> It'd be messed up. He gets hit by a rickshaw somewhere. Yeah, and it'd be like, he dies at 11.33. Like, we were just kidding. We <laughs> no, hey, we're going over <laughs> under, guys. Five days. Over under five days. Over under five days. We're starting we'll over under here. Yeah. That's a, yeah. <laughs> good times, good, good times. No, I know. Thanks, guys. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see if I can make it to the conference now. Let's see if I can make that date. You'll make it to the conference. Yo, are you going to try and make it down to the conference uh, down here in New Braunfels? Where's it at? Where, where's it going to be at this year? It's going to be in New Braunfels, yeah. and it's it's more than likely going to be the last one because they're very stressful. So I got I got to I got to get it done. Uh, we decided to do it. We're going to do it in New Braunfels or San Marcos area, and it's going to be the first weekend of November. Yeah, hey, yeah. Send me the when you get all that finalized. Send me some. Send me some details. I'd like to see if I can make that happen. Yeah, I, w I would. I would love to have you there. I hope everybody shows up. Matt, you were at the last one, and it was. Oh, you know, I'll be there. Off the chain. Sure. We had about a hundred and something more people. And they, they, they kept saying we weren't going to do good on Sunday. And Matt, you got to admit, it was a little shady there at the at the beginning. And, and Ken was like, "Barton got everybody drunk." I tried no. his hair. I like. I said, Dude, "It's going to be fine." I kind boom. of held my breath, and then boom! Everybody showed up, and Sunday was off the chain till like eight o'clock. It, it was awesome. It was an awesome, awesome. Yugi, I was just looking at for some reason the the feathers gone, so I I don't know what's it's it's not there anymore. So your feathers gone? 
Yeah. What's, you know, what's she saying? It's illegal. Tiger to took it back. He's like, you don't yeah, need to have that. Sure. I had to make sure. I had to make sure that she was right, man. I had to. Make sure <laughs> you were. You were <laughs> so right. You saw somebody walk behind you. That was me. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. What you happened. want to be lifted up out of the sky by the pious saw bird. So, you know, that's it. He was no, I, no. He's protecting you. I had to, like I said, I had to make sure he was a good guy. And then I started getting some inklings. When he started some weird him. vibes. <laughs> no, I'm he put his finger on it, whatever it was. So, Ryan, let me ask you this. You're living down in Mexico. Yep. Have you had the chance, like like what Yahola was talking about? Like, Yahola's telling us about the little people, which is always interesting. Everybody loves to hear about the little people. But you, down in Mexico, I mean, well, have you here, heard about the, 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 the little Monita, people, little monitos down there? So, so the Alushas, right, uh, is kind of the, the little people. They're not the really little people, but the Alushas are, you know, about two two and a half feet tall maybe three feet at most um they're they're an elemental of sorts and they have it has been stated that they're created through like mayan black magic as well where it's kind of like a, a homunculus where you they're sub nature yes yeah and you create this you you create it out of like cornmeal you know you can mold it with clay and then but it also every, takes something that i'm not going to talk about <laughs> well yeah you you give it you give it blood you give it uh -huh. human blood and, and other things and other things for nine days nine nights and at that point it comes to life and it will be kind of like your your servant of sorts and your protector um usually the protector of the yeah, land i'm shaking my head like you tiger uh, you know and, and you're right that's what they believe i mean um the yeah. mayans though the Mayans were, believed that they were nourishing, you know, Kukulkan uh, with their blood, you know, mm -hmm. just like, you know, they, it's it's a very, it's like uh, the Aztecs and people always get it wrong. They're like, hey, Quetzalcoatl, no, Quetzalcoatl was a totally different thing. It was Huitzilopochtli who they were serving. And here's something interesting, Zeptotec or Zepitotec, as they say, the jaguar <clears throat> god. It's very weird when you look at the Mayan jaguar god. Here's something for you, Hola. You were talking about Kiowa. The Kiowa had three major deities. Look at that. I actually did it. I, I, can't, I can't really I always say I can't bend this. I've broken it in boxing so bad. But I, I but that three deities in particular. And it was it was weird because the Comanche did not believe in any of that. They were very pragmatic. We just follow the buffalo and we kill anyone who comes into Comancheria. That is an Apache, and the Apache is actually a derogatory term. And the Comanche just called anybody who wasn't a Comanche an Apache. You could be an Anglo. It didn't matter. You were an Apache. You were not supposed to be there. But the, the Kiowa had a very powerful deity, which was the jaguar, which was the panther, right? And, and on their totem, they had the crow, and the other one was a wolf. Those are the main deities of the Kiowa. Um, when you looked at their totem, it was pretty basic. But one of the things that they did not like at all was the, uh, the they had a serious bone to pick with the Karankawas. And the Karankawas were considered cannibals. And so they believed that they were a very evil, evil, evil people. And they believed that one of the things that they did, because the Kai were a very superstitious people, when they would ingest this human flesh, they were trying to sound silly almost, but they would they were trying to make like these like little homunculus through their feces. And it's a very strange thing, I know. But you're ingesting human flesh now, of course. Mm -hmm. Now they're saying, well, the Karankawas really weren't cannibals. Oh, they were. Um, that's just trying to say that that didn't happen. And that they were trying to show how warlike the Kiowa and, and the Comanche were. And they attacked them for no reason because they were allies to the whites. That's not the case. They were fighting them before the white people ever showed up. Um, but th what's what's really weird, though, is that, that the idea that you can create or make something that would be your familiar and that you would keep control of it because it has to have a, a soul base, which means that at some point it's going to have free will. And if it decides to kill you um, because it doesn't want to be a slave, because who does? Um, that's yeah, that's what it'll do. And so these beings, the Mayans in particular, they had a jaguar god named Zipitotec or Ziptotec or Zipitotec. Everybody has a different way to say it. And he was also a blood drinker. Like literally, that's what he did. He was given blood by his Mayan 
servants, people, whatever, and and he would use that blood to make other animals, other types of creatures. So the Mayans got the idea for for that as do like that's that's what you do. You can create with blood because blood is the life, right? And so whenever you go and you you dig deep, they both had a dog-headed deity and of Aztecs we've talked about it named Zolotl. But you see how Zipe, Zolotl, it's very similar and they both wanted blood. All of these deities had one thing in common, they wanted blood. So when the Kiowa would make their kills, they would go to the totem and they would put blood all over it and they would put it in the mouth of the wood of the, of, of the totem. And then they would dance around for hours, you know, and they did this before war. Um, they would cut themselves and put blood on the totem. And then for the hunt, they would take buffalo blood and they would do this. Uh, yeah, X says Zipe Totec. Yeah, it's to yeah, Zipe, but Zipe Totec, Zippy Totec. I don't know how you want to say it. Um, I've been corrected more times than I can count, and everybody's always wrong. <laughs> They're always like, that's not how you're supposed to say it. You know why? Because I read it in a comic book, and that's what the comic book says, and that's how I say it. Who cares? But that's the point, you know. But when you when you stop and you look at these traditions, they all mirror one another. It's always the same thing, and it's always blood. They always mm -hmm. want blood because blood gives life. Right. I mean, it's it's so ridiculous that people can't see that. I mean, yeah, it, it, it's really, really crazy, you know, and it's it, it's blood magic. It's black magic. You know, uh -huh. you're it, it's dark stuff. So that was the theory of these Aleutians is how they were created. Um, my my sister in law saw now she says she saw an Aleush, but it almost sounds like a gray alien. So. She was a about eight years old and out in the backyard, she saw this figure come like bounding across. She said it was about three feet, about a meter high. It had a big, large bulbous head. Um, it wasn't wearing any clothes, but it was had the silverish skin that was glowing. It was giving off emanating like the silverish glow. And you know, she's certain that I, I kind of mentioned something about a gray alien. And she's like, no, no, this was a, this was an Aleush. Um, well, you know, the gray aliens, I don't know if anybody on this panel knows this, but the gray aliens, this is something for tomorrow, but they, I believe are biological robots and they and are actually are. created. Yeah. They are created by a tall, the talls, the talls created the grays. And so people. they themselves are an alien homunculus. They're created through genetic tampering. Totally Any great. one of us can do a ceremony and create something. It doesn't mean that it's going to be good. And the no. Jewish, Jewish tradition, it's called a gullum. And there's another thing mm -hmm. called a dibuk. But there's something in between a dibuk and a gullum, right? Just like we were talking about the Nagula uh, in the Arab tradition and the Quotrib. The Quotrib also does something very similar to the Niguela, but they their territories kind of overlap and they'll kill each other. Uh, typically, the Quatrub, the Arabian werewolf, is at the top of the food chain and it does kill and eat the other ghouls. Although they inhabit uh, uh, the places of the dead, they don't necessarily eat them unless, and I get this, this is something I studied recently, I was reading. If they kill and eat one of these ghouls, they will take on the characteristics of the ghoul and become a corpse eater too. Very weird. But the Quetrub, I am convinced, is an actual shapeshifter. And that's someone who does that. And just like Jerry Williams was talking about the Choctaw tradition is the, whatever you eat, you become. <laughs> so that's what happens. This thing eats one of these ghouls and then it becomes a corpse eater itself. So that's where you get that supposedly, you know, our world is very strange. It's a very strange place. Hey, Josh. Yeah. Yeah, hey, I, I got to hop off. Yeah. My kids are, are, are uh, deciding to, to wake up. But uh, um, I appreciate you, you having me on, man. This is it's been a lot of fun. But before I go, I always I always try to leave with a story. That's kind of how I always, I always done things. And I'll give you all a Bigfoot story. Sure. Um, so when uh, I was dating this girl in college and – her house was north of Tahlequah, and so it was headed towards Briggs, um, Oklahoma. It's a little small elementary school, but it's a little little town, basically all native. And 
her her house basically like as you're headed to Briggs, you take a right and you go up this the base of the side of a hill, and her house sat on on the edge of that hill, and you know she always she always kind of asked me like why are you why are you not afraid to come out like outside at night, and I was like looked at her I said what do you mean, she goes oh like it's really creepy out there I was like okay and you know keep explaining you know okay and and her uh, sister's boyfriend chimed in and said yeah man every time i get out man something's following so one night he had got out of the car he drove up there and it was night and it's when he first started dating this girl you know the sister and, and she was like well here he was getting to the house and she was like hey hurry up hurry up and she already had the door opening for everything and he could hear something steps behind him like really heavy steps and so he ran and he gets in there and he's like yeah man there's something out there at night they something's going on and so i asked her i said well what do you think it is she goes well she's like and and like i said this is how she described it but she's like yeah she's like man there's a black dude there's a black dude outside my window that looks in my window at night and i looked at her i said i looked at her i said you live in the middle of nowhere cherokee nation Mm -hmm. you know the only black people in this town are on the football team basketball team you know, there's there compared to ratios. And I looked at her, I said, I don't know about that. I don't think somebody would be out here trying to, you know, do something to you. Mm-hmm. And she said one night it was getting dark and she looked out her window and her she had this big old bay window that was like the side I mean, it was a big window. And she's laying there in bed and her her bed faces the window. So she's laying down and can see directly out up that up the hill, you know, in the middle of nowhere. And she saw somebody looking behind a tree. And it kept looking at her like this and would watch her. And then she'd look at it and it'd go right behind the tree. And then this tree is a big tree. And she says, man, I don't know who this black dude's messing with me. You know, I I tried to, you know, I was thinking about calling the cops, but like, you know, he could just run off and there's nothing going to be done. I said, I looked at her, I said, that ain't it. I said, no, that's not it. And she's like, no, what do you mean? And so then I, I was talking to her dad. He He passed away not too long ago. And. He goes, yeah, when I bought this place, there was some weird stuff going on here. And he was real bad ill at the time, so he couldn't get out and do things that he wanted to do. But they had, uh, I guess, uh, a juvenile messing with them outside the house. And so what he would do is he would hang out and see the car come up the driveway and then chase them. You know, chase the people into the house. And, and it was just uh, real creepy. But I remember one night I was, I was I sat out there for a minute and I could hear something. And it was like... Like when something's trying to be quiet, but it's not quite quiet. It's just like it's like it's on its tippy toes trying to walk because there was the the driveway, and then there was like these trees that went all the way up to the the garage door. And it was like I said, in the middle of nowhere. But uh, but you just never know what's out there. And 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 I like I said, man, I uh, I appreciate you you having me on. It was a it was really a lot of fun. I especially uh, you know with the dynamics, you know, all like native culture. You know, you see the similarities in the different cultures, like you mentioned tonight. And like I said, I'm not by I'm by no means an expert. I wanted to preface that it's just things I've heard. Um, but uh, Josh, I, I appreciate you having me on. It's good meeting you two fellas. Uh, too yeah, well. same yeah, here. Great, great meeting yeah, you too. Yeah, we put the link to your to your uh, podcast on there, War, War Cry Podcast. You do a good job. Everybody, go check him out. He's got some great stuff, good stories, everything. And uh, don't be a stranger. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. I'll, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm so bad. Like that's one thing that, you know, I'll have interviews lined up. That's why I forgot today. I just had a lot going on. I was like, man, and I apologize if the the audio, cause I'm gonna listen to this bag and if the audio is terrible, I'm, I'm Josh, I'm be mad because I had all, like, I had all my stuff ready. It's just, it, we had a lot, I had a lot going on, on on the back end and I forgot all the stuff. And then you hit me up and said, Hey man, you ready? I'm like, golly, but <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, hopefully it went all right. Hopefully the, the it sounded fine. It ta- you sounded, did good. You sounded fine. Okay. Yeah. We got well, to get together y'all. sometime and we can record, you know, for, for the podcast too, because our podcast yeah, for sure, is man. like an audience. Yeah. I, I, like I said, um, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm thinking I want to save you for like a, like a year. Like I'll be at my two year in November. So I may save you for that, for that, that two year, but also too, but hey, but also too, like I said, I may, you know, I may hit you up because like I said, man, you, you got a lot, lot going on, but like I said, I, you know, you got a, a, a good platform and, and I appreciate you, you giving me a, a little bit of a boost and let, let me come on and, 
and talk a little bit. No, for sure. Absolutely. Not a problem. Thanks for coming on, man. And like I said, we'll talk. And if you want me as a guest, I said this to everybody. I don't go do shows unless people are my friends. And I was telling Matt about this. We were talking about it last night. I've turned mm -hmm. down some big uh, opportunities um, because I want to grow. You know, And I'm not trying to do it to grow. I'm, I'm trying to just grow organically. And I only do shows with people I know. So, I mean, it's no offense to anybody. Um, people, big or small, there's big shows that I've turned down and smaller shows. I don't know who they are. Um, but my friends, you're my friends. And so if you need something, you want me to come on your show and talk, I always save something back for when I go on somebody's show. Something that you, that way my, my audience will follow because you'll hear something you've never heard before. You know, I don't just go on there and tell the same thing, you know, whatever. I just, I always bring something different, you know. Well, I appreciate you, man. Yeah, like I said, we'll, we'll be in contact. For sure, man. It was good seeing you, man. I'll see you. Yep, for sure. Y'all have a good one. Nice to meet you, man. And we'll stay in the group. I I, I do. Yes, sir. Me. Planet 412. I got you. Sure. All right. <laughs> for sure, for sure. You take care. Right, bye. So so that's Yahola Tiger. What do you guys think? Guy. Pretty, pretty, pretty good guy, right? Pretty nice he's, guy. He's got, a, he's got a lot of stories and a lot of information, and it's a it, – it's really great, uh, great hearing that. I actually wasn't subbed to his channel, so I just did that as well here. Yeah, and tell the folks about you and your channel too, uh, Rye. Tell them what's going on with you. Okay, yeah. So, of course, um, Codega's Codex of Curiosities. Uh, it's just a plethora of... Uh, I, I, I hit all the topics, I think, is, is the best way to say, you know, uh, high strangeness, UFOs, uh, um, Dogman, Bigfoot, Cryptids... Uh, everything like that. And I just, I get interviews, uh, you know, I bring people on to interview them and talk to them about that. And every now and then I do, uh, um, well, every Tuesday now, uh, Matt and myself and, uh, the Sasquatchers, we get together, we do something called the supernatural town hall sessions where we just get yes. together, talk about something. We had you on, uh, mm -hmm. not this Tuesday, but the Tuesday passed so about a week and a half ago. And, uh, that was fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, we just pick a topic and circle around it and, see where it goes yeah and the thing the thing is you know like i've talked to all you guys on and off yeah. the off air and you know and i kind of know about who's doing what and what what's going on in the world of i i am so happy and i told this matt and me talked for like two hours or something last night it was a great conversation matt's a good guy and i said this i said i am so happy to see this new trend that's coming up and I'm glad that I could be at the forefront of that. And, and I'm not going to say I started it cause I don't know who started it, but I, you know, I've been at it since the beginning. We're all in this together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I mean by that is like, we're doing this. It's a group effort and there yeah. are just some malcontents that have been doing whatever. Let them be, let them go and live on their Island and be butt naked and throw spears at the planes that go over. <laughs> who cares? Um, but but the, the 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 main people, the real people, people that are doing things, we're all in this together, and we're trying to find answers, and we're we're telling stories, rich history of tradition, and yeah. learning about history, and 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 different things, science, and and everything in between. And and we're yeah. talking about alien abduction, and we're talking about ghosts, and we're talking about Bigfoot, we're talking about Dogman, because it's all connected. And of course, you're going to step on some toes, and some people's little fiefdom may they may be threatened because you're oh you might have some people that like your stuff, whatever. I don't really care. I want everybody to eat. I want everybody to succeed. Thank you, Kate Hunter, for that donation. I just really appreciate wow. that. Holy Kate yeah. wasn't wasn't doing too much. I was thinking Tony was going to tease me again, but I guess he's not going to be able to now. Uh -huh. <laughs> thanks to thanks to good old Kate, she she saved me on that one because mm -hmm. you know Tony, me and Tony. We always tease and make fun of each other, right? Right? And like he'll just stick his head in my office and be like, "Did I tell you today? I just want to tell you you're still ugly." And I'm like, close the door. Right? <laughs> and I'm just like, "Did I tell you you're still stupid?" I mean, it doesn't change it's from day to day, you know. But uh, no, it's it's uh, one of those things where you know when you look at the traditions of like where Matt's from or where you're living, right, mm -hmm. or where yeah. Yahola Tiger is, you know, or where I'm at, you know, it, it's it's all connected. Mm -hmm. it's all yeah. connected and people don't understand. They just can't, they can't grasp. No, it, it, it's just told with a different point of view. Almost. It's the same stories or same entities 
told from a different point of view. And, you know, sometimes they get a little twist on it, maybe a little Mexican and habanero twist on it or, or something, you know, Northern Canada or something else like that, you know, but there's so many connections, so many similarities and, yeah, it's all connected. And and I agree with you. We're trying to find these answers. And that's what I want to do. You know, I, th that's why I want people to come on to my show is is so I can get closer to any sort of answer. But I almost find whenever I get closer to an answer, there's five more new questions that pop up. Mm -hmm. It's you get closer to something and then all of a sudden you get these more these other questions. And you're like, OK, well, what is this? What's that? Um, it, it's 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 really fascinating. It's like this enigma that we're all trying to find out and and it, it's it like like the one that i sent to, i talked to matt last night about it and then i actually sent that to you as well that big huge long-winded message uh, last night about that one guy mm -hmm. that i just interviewed i i have no idea i have no idea where to even go with that it's i know matt and i kind of tossed around a couple of ideas possibly windigo skinwalker don't know don't know it was incredible incredible yeah yeah, I I really feel for the for the guy. Like when he was telling his story, it, it's it's a pre recorded one, so it's going to be released at the end of April. But when he was telling his story, it it's affecting him still to this day. Kind of Matt, when you tell your story as well, and again, I don't mean disrespect by saying story. I think we pass on our oral traditions through stories, mm -hmm. so that that is what these are. But yeah, you can tell that this this has affected this individual greatly, and trying to find him at least some sort of sense of direction to look into because he has no idea where to, where to go. You know, the doctors were telling him, Oh, you're just sleepwalking. Like, and here's some drugs, here's some drugs. You're just sleepwalking. That's it. What, what kind of answer is that? There's not, that's an inside the box answer where they're, yeah. you know, they're not able to modern medical it. science. I mean, and they, yeah. everything goes back to a magic pill. I mean, it's like the song one pill makes you larger. One pill makes you small. <laughs> Uh, yeah. the one that other gives you doesn't do anything at all. I mean, I don't have any idea what I'm talking about, so I'm just gonna give you this medicine, maybe it'll help. Yeah, yeah, you know, whatever. Know. What, whatever, you know, and doctors will actually do this. Thank you, Eve, for that donation. Very, very appreciated tonight. Like I said, we are trying to get the money together to buy some camera equipment, and mm -hmm. <clears throat> we want to get some things. And here's another thing, too I go on to Amazon. And I look up hiking shoes because I realize I don't really have a decent pair of hiking shoes. I did, um, but I don't anymore. And so to go out into the to the different places we're going to go, I, I looked up hiking shoes. And I'm like, they went like over 100 bucks for a pair of hiking shoes. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, for I mean, I mean, what do these things do? Do they transform into something and, and do something else special that we don't know about? Did they, did they, can you take it off and let it go hunt for your food and bring it back to you like Ravage from the Transformers? Like, you know? I, I will say, in in defense of that, I bought a pair of hiking boots, uh, probably about $160, $170. Um, That's what I'm talking about. But I, I bought them in 2000. OK, I'm wow. still using them, still using them to this day. They are just starting to like maybe I might have to get them resold. But and, and I wore them throughout the whole world. Like I went hiking in Costa Rica with them. I was in New Zealand. I was, you know, everywhere throughout the world wearing these boots, using them a lot they paid for themselves over and over. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. So sometimes I do say it's worth spending a little extra money. But other times, mm -hmm. yeah, some things you can cut, definitely cut corners. Well, and a left prime says uh, all shoes cost like a hundred dollars now. Not necessarily. I, I've gotten a few pair of shoes that weren't super duper uh, expensive, um, but I go through shoes unfortunately because I weigh three hundred and seventy eight pounds. I was just and gonna so, say, you know, just you and me, like you know, we're bigger guys. So they're me too. Don't ever. don't don't count me out, man. I was uh, before I moved to Mexico. I was pushing. I was three ten. So wow. Oh yeah, yeah. What do you weigh I, now? I, I, Right, I haven't weighed myself in a while, but I would say I'm about uh 250, 240 in around there I'm, now. I'm, so, so, you know how he lost all that weight, man? He just drank a lot of water down there, <laughs> and yeah, that'll do and it. Took care of it. He was like, Wow, the whole time, exactly. All I needed to do is Montezuma's revenge. And that and then... happened to me in Guatemala, we were in Guatemala, and, and it was in the middle of the night because we adopted my daughter Amira from Guatemala, and uh. 
we we were there and it was 4 a.m. in the morning and you know I just didn't want to wait for them to bring up bottled water. <laughs> I made a mistake and I drank water from the tap. Uh, I ended up in the hospital when I got back home. I was so dysentery sick. like crazy. Oh man. Oh, it was horrific. Yeah. Never so did did, did you you knew though, right? The the consequences of it? Did yeah, you not know? Oh. You're lucky you didn't get cryptosporidium. Because yeah, that's was, another was, thing that dwells in the water down there. No. Um, people don't realize how bad some of the parasites are. And I say parasites. It's not The bacteria and the viruses are one thing, too. But yeah, the, right. the, the parasites are really bad. And, and it's a simple thing, day. You know, well, people don't realize this because they don't filter the water out correctly. Like, when you drink it, you're also drinking medication. That you don't know what you're drinking. I've heard people get get drinking water. When I was down in Monterey, I was spending some time down in Monterey because I had to. Well, it doesn't matter, but I was down there. Let's put it that way. And they, they were people were you know got high, kind of like you know they felt all weird and kind of were like, well, I, was, I don't know. I drank some water. It was one of my brother's friends, mm -hmm. and that guy was a real idiot anyway. And I was like, he was like, I feel kind of whatever, you know. And I said, yeah, because they don't filter the water here. So you, you're probably drinking people's medication. Yep. You're drinking basically who knows what you're drinking, you know. And, um, and when people don't understand when you say drinking medication, it, like some people will do many things. They'll flush their medications down. Or when you take the medications and you go to the bathroom in the toilet, you know, any any like stuff that you don't uh, actually your body doesn't uh, take in, you're expelling it. You're expelling the medication through that. And yeah, it, it, you're you're you're. Absolutely correct. And also a little bit of fluoride as well, too. You know, that's yeah. always in there. Well, down in Mexico, though, it's, it's not like in America where they give you the fluoride. Like here, they put fluoride in everything because they yeah. want us to be dumb as hell. Um, yeah. Fluoride's a poison. And it's like, oh, it's good for your teeth. It's good for your teeth. Yet the, the sugar, we, we eat tons of sugar. And just why don't we just brush our teeth with sugar? Because yeah. I've never had a cavity in my life ever. OK, um, wow. and that's I'm 48 years old. That's rare. But I've always been I've had good oral hygiene. But it's a lot of people get cavities. And the main thing is because of sugar, sugar, mm -hmm. sugar, sugar. So up here, like pan dulce down there is not like it is up here. Like up here, there's like a donut. And 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 like I had gone almost two years with, with eating very little sugar. I had lost over 100 pounds. And so we went out and I ate a bear claw. Ooh. And I'm not joking. We were like at a at a at a donut place, you know. And then I got a bear claw and I ate it. And I was like, oh, whoa! I was like, oh boy! And I felt like I was in space. I mean, wow! It was unbelievable, mm -hmm. and I couldn't believe how sweet it was, you know. But then I went to the Mexican bakery. Um, what's the one with the tacos where you can get them late at night? What's that place called? Uh, I was called Maria's or. What was that place on South First? It's on South First, but anyway, <laughs> it, yeah, it's called uh, what is it called? It, it, it's a really good place, and they they're not a sweet. And it's they, 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 they use more of the natural sugar, they're using like the yeah. cane sugar, the natural sugar, they're not they're using like that oil. high yeah. fructose uh, corn syrup and all that. Like, other. They, they like to use like what turbinado sugar. I love turbinado sugar, I love that. It, it doesn't, and it and it, you know, it doesn't, and like just like you, Matt, like your culture, the Lebanese culture. The Mexican culture, they don't put a lot of sugar in their in their dessert. Like the baklava doesn't have. And so when you eat some of this, you know, it, it's it's just a lot of bread. It's mostly carbs, you know, but mm -hmm. it's not a lot of sugar. And so when you're used to that American like donut and you eat. So so I have a friend who's Cambodian and, and a lot of cultures will come to America and they'll find a niche because so, somebody in their culture will have that and that's what so the nepalese are starting to take over the gas stations from and convenience stores from the pakistanis who are now moving into different types of business and hotels and things like that and i always get along with them because i know about their culture i know about Kathmandu, which is in nepal a lot of people don't even know that and i know a lot about their traditions so i can always like we got to be good, good friends with the people that run the store next door and of course you have all these different cultures, the Cambodians have started to open up donut shops. Like everywhere around here, they're owned by Cambodians. 
And so when I when I talked to them, I got to know one of them pretty good and be friends with them because I was working as an assignment that was kind of rough. So I had to kind of take it over. So in the morning I would go in there and I would get like this uh the the, the less the least sugary thing they had, which was an, actually a Cambodian, like a little stick looking thing, and it was a Cambodian treat. And I said, I don't want a lot of sugar. And the guy was like, Okay. He's like, We have very little anything American. That's not, but we have this Cambodian treat that is just like got a little bit of glaze on there. And so it was just enough to make you feel like, so you weren't eating a bunch of sugar. And so then we started talking. I got to know the guy and he told me, he's like, he goes, man, Americans just love sugar. He's like, it's unbelievable. He's like, in my country, we don't eat this much sugar. I mean, the donuts, he said he had even had tried to cut some of the sugar down, you know, on the donuts and they noticed it. And his clients were coming in and going like, these donuts just aren't sweet enough. And he's like, I'm putting a pound of sugar in these donuts. Like, how can you not notice that? Mm. So, yeah, it has gotten uh, so ridiculous. I mean, it has just gotten so ridiculous. Some of the things that are going on, it's just like, I just can't believe how, how addicted we are. Sugar it, it, and salt. Sugar is one of the biggest addictions around. It is it crazy. Is. And like I'm um, I'm literally going on a uh, no sugar diet right now. It's been a month now where oh, I am. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm doing keto and uh, and carnivore. So it's called the uh, ketovore. But uh, yeah, cutting out, I cut out all the sugar and, you know, I will say that craving in the first week, it, it was pretty strong. But uh, but you're, you're saying, yeah. Like one of the reasons why I did lose a, a fair about a fair amount of weight when I moved to Mexico was I am positive it has to do with all the preservatives that are in the food in Canada. You know, like the, you have all these preservatives, and it's not it's, everything is processed. But you come down here, everything is made from scratch. People are making everything it. just from the basic ingredients. They're making it all from scratch. Granted, yeah, there's a Burger King or you know there's Church's Chicken or something like that. But I can go down the street oh, over oh, here. Oh, I love I, Church. But but I can go down <laughs> here and I, I can get the, a lot the of chicken Mexican. El Carbon, and it's and it's ten times better than Church's Chicken, and it's cheaper, and it's just like right then. You know, they just butchered it the night before and it's cooked up, and it's delicious. Yeah. Churches is big down there in Mexico. They have them all over the place. I it's miss churches. It is ridiculous. Oh, Th there is, churches. like, I'm not kidding you. There is line, like, car, well, that and Little Caesars Pizza, uh -huh. there, there is lineups out. Like, people are sitting in their cars. Like, there is, like, at least when you go by, um, we'll say during rush hour, dinner time, there is about 15 to 20 cars in the drive through waiting to go through. Um, they're lined up right on the main, the main road. You go to... Uh, little caesar's pizza and it is packed too but i'm thinking little caesar's is packed because it's so cheap you know you 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 get a pizza for um like 100 pesos or 180 pesos which is fairly inexpensive and that's why people are buying it more is because you know you don't have as much money what is the peso down is is it, is it still it's like 8 to 1 or something like that what is it um so the peso oh, 14 to 1 but i thought it went back down cuz of our inflation. no no it, it's like 17 so 17, 17 pesos okay. so 17 to down. 1 um but the peso is rising again because i watch it almost daily for the canadian dollar because i still want to transfer some canadian money back down and <clears throat> and it's it, it's it's going back up like i mean like the peso is going up and the canadian dollar is losing losing ground again on it so it's yeah big time it, it, i noticed that yeah when we first yeah, moved here it was it was at its have, highest oh, sorry go ahead matt you guys have pollo campero and in, in mexico that's what they have all over guatemala is it's their fried chicken it's their kfc one thing you we'd be going back like to america and anybody coming from it'd be so weird you get a plane full of people and at least three quarters of the plane would have boxes of this pollo camperera <laughs> and you know you get sick sometimes having to smell the whole plane smelling like this but yeah that's huge down in, in guatemala is this pollo camperera they love that chicken down there, man. Well, Guatemala is lucky to have anything, you know, from any, because they had a 30-year civil war that they were fighting yeah. against the communists. And part of that fighting, and people don't realize this, was in southern Mexico. And mm. in the hills and mountains of Mexico, 
there was a communist uh, stronghold that was there mm-hmm. for 50 freaking years. And was that the Zapotecas or Zapotecas? Yeah, that, that, that is one branch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, yeah, and they, they were calling themselves like the Brown Party and all this other stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. And it was all like, you know, Rasa and La Primera and all this, whatever. But in, in reality, I mean, they weren't really, they were actually, they ended up becoming mercenaries. Mm-hmm. And then the a lot of dangerous the areas. Do what? There's a lot of dangerous areas. Down oh man, there. I'm it's telling you, Guatemala was a, was a, one of the worst places you could go at one point. Oh. And then you had the uh, what are they called? From uh, we were talking about them the other day from uh, Colombia. They were the uh, the FARC. FARC was down there, and they were all over Guatemala. I was in Guatemala mm-hmm. at one point. I went down there, and uh, it was uh, pretty sketch. There was a lot we of stuff stayed, going on. We stayed when we were adopting Amira. We stayed at this one, you know, because in the downtown area, they have the nicer hotels. They're very Americanized. They want the Americans staying in the safer areas and they're kind of, you know, put together. I'll never forget, we we're staying at the Grand Tical, is one of the nicer rest, or, uh, hotels. And we were in our room and we had met another family that was adopting and we heard gunfire. And we went out and we walked out and to the parking lot and just below on the underpass, I mean, within, you know, view, maybe 50 yards was a minivan that somebody had rolled up on uh, a man and a woman and shot them both. The man had killed the woman in the, in the passenger seat. The man must have got out and ran. They shot him, killed him on the highway and thank god and the back seat was a baby that was crying they didn't kill the baby but that, i mean we just right there we heard it we saw it and there's police down there you know they ride around in in uh pickup trucks they'll sit in the back of the pickup trucks and they're not your normal police there's written in, in guatemala is a little different dialect than than you know your normal latin and it'll be everywhere, all over Guatemala. You'll see written in, in spray paint, don't trust the police and things like that. And, you know, then they lost Belize, which is a gorgeous place. And we've gone there, Belize right next to uh, Guatemala and, and completely Americanized. Most people speak English there. Then, man, it, man, we not a great place, Guatemala. Everybody's talking about the chicken. What's it called? Pollo Rico. We have Pollo Rico here. It's really amazing. I've eaten a lot of them. Pollo Rajio and all the other ones, but Pollo Rico is top notch. I'm so hungry right now. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's like a, it, you know, so, so I was going to tell you something. Down in Guatemala, when I was down there, there was this uh, creature that everybody was terrified of, the Corta Cabeza. And the Corta Cabeza is basically is like this giant bird. And what it does is it attacks you by biting your head off. And the porters were terrified and they didn't want to go into a certain area where there was this big clump of trees because a lot of it's jungle. Mm -hmm. And I had to get through that area. And I said, why are they all afraid? And of course, I've been to other countries and I did what I did. I was in Hong Kong at one point. And uh, I was trying to do something, do the math, you know, okay, it was a long time ago. But anyway, I was, you know, I was down in Guatemala and I was, you know, messing around down there. And I said, look, how come we can't get through? And they said, no, no, it's the key, you know, it's the bird, you know, whatever. I said, oh, okay, over here's a bird. Mm -hmm. In English, like, why? You know, and they were like, well, it'll cut your head off. I, I told this story on my show years ago, like four or five years ago. And when we got close enough and I, and I had a pair of binoculars and I looked and I said, you know, it's like a donkey trail. You know what it is? And mm-hmm. like I said before, folks, I have a pass from back in the day and I had reasons for going all over the place that, that you know, it's everybody's got a pass. But I was like, what is this? You know, why, why are we stopped? And they wouldn't go any further. And no matter how much money you offered them, they weren't going to go by that. So we ended up going like long. eight kilometers around, going down the side of a cliff, basically, and going up and up. So I didn't see anything. But then when I got onto this ridge, 
I looked again and I was like, what is this? And I saw something. I don't know. To this day, I'm not 100 percent, but it looked like something moving inside that clump. of And they have these trees that grow where they're almost like a bunch of it's almost like small, skinny branches from the ground that go up. And I don't know what they're yeah. called. Yeah. And they're everywhere. And so yeah, there was something in there, and I was like, what is that? And it looked like a giant bird or something. And so when I described the dimensions of it to this guy that they called Juan Jefe Juan, and I told him, I said, Juan, you know, what is this? You know, And he said, that is the Corte Cabeza, and it is, and, uh, but that is a baby. And I was like, baby? That thing's about five foot tall. And he said, yes, <laughs> a baby. And I said, okay. So I said, well, where are the parents at? And he goes, oh, you know, up in the sky. I went, oh, great. So, you know, I'm like, really? That So they're just up. He goes, yeah, they look for food, you know. And I'm like, okay, this isn't a good thing, you know. And I'm like, well, we got to get out of this valley. We there's really a lot that, that they go that far around. They won't accept mine. I mean, that tells you everything right there. Well, and, and the thing is, we, we could have, you know, fired on these things. But the thing was, the reason they didn't was because the, the parents of this thing, because they have parents that mate, supposedly. Mm -hmm. um, and you're not going to find this in any naturalist books or anything like that, because there's no words for it. Just like what he was talking about, the Aleutians, you're not going to find anything in any books about these homunculus things. Um, but they, they exist, I'm telling you. And so... If you would have shot that creature, these things would have come down and like caused a bunch of problems. And mm -hmm. so they were terror. They live in terror of these things, you know, just like, you know, in some places, the chupacabra is a big joke. And then in other places out in the middle of nowhere, the chupacabra is a very real threat. Mm -hmm. um, if you go into the inner cities, they're like, ah, chupacabra, yeah, chupacabra. It's a big joke, la, 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 la. Um, but then you're out of the right arrows. It's like the chupacabra is not a joke. It's something that attacks our animals, and it will kill you. Um, and it's an and it's a vampiric lizard, alien looking creature. Uh, so yeah, you know, that, 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 that where you live, they 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 don't believe. No, it, it, the chupacabra here in this locale, like in this uh, in the peninsula, is a joke. People think it's a joke because. It must not be in this area, but well, everything's a chupacabra, though. <laughs> true, <laughs> true. But you, you talk about Alushas, though. Everybody has just about everybody has an Alush story, you know. Like I said, my sister in law, my other brother in law, he has an Alush story as well, you know. And they're they staying out on some land, and they're outside. They could hear they could hear them outside, you know. These sounded like children playing outside at like midnight, one in the morning, and so they put out an offering a plate a plate of food of offering you know are and they the ones you also leave tobacco and and sour milk for is that the illusion that i have i have not heard that like i i know i know tobacco is a native like you won't find tobacco from what i've learned here in mexico as an offering because that wasn't in a rum. Rum. But, rum. but no you uh, it's corn actually corn is more of an okay. offering because that is that is more local here so that's what you would be offering but Everything, everything now, it doesn't matter. You just offer them candy and everything. It doesn't. Right. Yeah. Life, life, everybody life, loves life, sugar. Yeah. Yehola Tiger was talking about how everything is instant gratification now. You don't even have to go through all the steps to become a skinwalker. It's like, they're like, yeah, we're not going to do that. We're just going to microwave it and you're going to become a skinwalker because used to, we'd actually have to cook it and, at home and make you into one. Now we just probably doing the same thing with the illusions. They're probably like, yeah, well, in the past, we would, you know, take several days. Now we're just going to, like, make it into a gingerbread man, put it in the oven, and you're done. That's it. We're done. <laughs> and that's it. Good to go. When you were in Guatemala, did you go see the Black Sand Beach? Did you at go no. there? No, we I went, went to a very to... specific region and then achieved did my you objective. Your that 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 you what? I, I I I don't talk about it much. It's from my past, but I, I went okay. to a very specific place and I achieved my objective and I got out. That was it. Um, you know, um, you know, I don't want to get into my past. I, mean, I, was, I was all over the world. I went all over the world. I went to Hong Kong. Here's a funny thing. I went to Hong Kong and I didn't I, as a young man and I, and I was working for some people and they said, if you can get this done, then go do it. And so I went to Hong Kong and I had a guy 
who sort of wanted to play a joke on me, he could speak Cantonese, which is what they speak in Hong in Hong Kong. It's not uh, Mandarin. It's not that you know. And Hong Kong at one point was a it belonged to the British. And in 1997, they pulled out and they gave it to the Chinese. But it took the Chinese about a good 15 years to really get it under control because they were not used to being controlled. And they were basically telling China, go screw yourself. We're not going to do this. And so I'd say it was even 20 years probably it took them. Yeah, it, and, it, it, it was long. Like, I know some people from Hong Kong, they do not say we are Chinese. We are Hong no. Kongian. Yeah, yeah, we are Hong Kongian. We are not Chinese. Yeah, they, they, are, they don't accept their role, rule at all. And the British, when they controlled it, it was very lax. So you had soldiers that were kind of like new to that area that the Chinese had come in with the soldiers. And so they were walking around on the streets. And this was like 99 and so they were, you know, they were scared. They were, they would stand there on the corner like this, you know, like because the, the Hong Kong people weren't taking their crap. They were just like, you, you can pretend like you're in charge, but you're not, you know. And so they kind of were working with the local law enforcement to do whatever. So it was kind of like the Wild West, and the opium trade was big there, and it was wide open. Okay. So anyway, I went there and I was talking to my my connection and he was like speaking in Cantonese, which I did not speak much of. And then he gave me a little piece of paper of what to say, how to say, I need to use the restroom, how to ask for food, the basic stuff. And I said, okay, this is, this is great. I, I don't, you know, so I walked into a restaurant and there was, this, it, was a, it was a noodle house. And I told the guy, and I, and if I, I can't remember exactly how, but it was like Timmy Chan Chan sandwich. Something like that, you know, and, and, and I can't remember all the, like exactly how it was worded. And the guy goes, oh, uh, noodle. And I was like, I said, um, noodle, yes. Mm -hmm. Food. And he goes, ah, food. Yes. Like I said, okay. And he said, oh, sandwich. You want the, the sandwich. So, yeah. He goes, no, noodle. And I said, okay, this guy doesn't know how to speak it. So I just threw the paper. I'm like, yeah, okay, dude, whatever. Noodles in a bowl, whatever you want to give me. I wasn't the same person I am now. I was very impatient, and I was beginning to become angry. And I said, I don't give a crap. Just give me something to eat. So what he does is he brings me two slices of bread with noodles inside of it. <laughs> he puts it on the thing, and he goes, and he goes noodle, noodle. And he's and probably so like, proud, so proud. Yeah, and I was looking up at him, and I said, and I was like, this, this, I was like, disgusting, disgusting. And he goes, oh, uh, next time order in English. <laughs> and so he walks off, and before I could even register what he had just said, I was like, wait, what? The guy just spoke perfect English to me. So I pushed my seat back, and my friend's sitting there laughing his ass off at me. So I go um, over to, the, to the counter, and I said, excuse me. Excuse me. He turns around. He goes, yes. Like he's being, you know, whatever again. Because she says, yeah. Yeah. And I said, okay. And I made this goofy comment. And I said, okay, I, I get it. All right. I get it. I said, you speak English. He goes, yeah. 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 Most of us do. He goes, most people, you, you, you just, it's, you know. And Major. I said, well, how is that? He goes, because the British controlled this place for a long time. <laughs> but under the British, though, they had a lot of their own autonomy. It was like. They kind of like like held sway only over like really serious matters, but there was like, like Canada and and the monarchy. <laughs> yeah, it was like they they held sway, but you could kind of do what you wanted, and in the back alleys and in the whatever you were you know big and bad enough to get away with. The underworld was big, you know, and they would just pay those British you know officers off, mm -hmm. and they'd just be like, "Do what you want, we don't care." Um, it was an assignment they wanted to be on anyway, way halfway across the world, you know. Mm -hmm. And so he said, he said, yeah, we speak English here. Most people do. And he goes, and if you had just come in and said, do you speak English? I would have said, yes, sir, I speak English. And I would have told you we don't make sandwiches here, but there's a place about a block down that makes a sandwich. And he goes, you're asking for a sandwich. And I said, well, I'm asking for a sandwich because the guy that gave me this paper. And then he goes, who gave you that? And I said, ah, a friend of mine, whatever. And he goes, yeah, well, he's messing with you. Messing with you. Yeah, so the next day I went back and I said, thanks for that. Thanks for that or whatever. And when I was asking uh, 
to, to use the restroom, they were pointing at this uh, strip bar or whatever it was down the street. And I kept going like, there's no bathroom here. So that was where uh, basically I was asking to go to a brothel. Oh. So when I went in for the bathroom, I was like, where is the brothel? You know, and they were like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. down there, you know. And uh, they all kind of, it was like a joke. They mess with people, you know. Yeah. One of my friends is a is a kickboxer. A couple of them are kickboxers there, and they're really, yeah, really uh, good guys. Stuff, boy. They love uh, living there and living abroad. Um, but yeah, it was it was a learning experience for me. And you know, same thing with Guatemala. I went down to Guatemala, and I didn't realize like they were just it's it was a civil war going on, mm -hmm. and so there was a lot of stuff that was happening. And um, you just don't. That must have been it. one hell of a time to go down there. I tell you what, also many uh, every time we were there, it took us four and a half years, nineteen trips to get my daughter home, and there were some days they had those volcanoes. Man, Mar that whole city would rumble, and they'd be smoking every day. And we got her home, and a week after we got her home, they had one of the worst. Uh, volcanic eruptions and history in, in Guatemala there. Shit. Yeah. Wow. But a funny, quick, funny uh, food story from Guatemala. My, my our one friend um, actually, it was actually in Belize, so right next door. We went, he was the, uh, the national basketball coach for Belize. And we went and he was playing baseball. We said, you want to come to a baseball game with me? He's American. Kevin Soroki is his name. He lives back in America now, but we went and and we were sitting in the stands at this at this baseball game, and this guy's coming around, and he he says, "Do you want a hamburger?" And my wife and I looked at him and say, "Hell yeah, we're gonna have a have a hamburger right now." <laughs> Guy has a big uh, you know like uh, plastic bin, and he puts it down. Or you know he obviously cooked the hamburgers ahead of time. He has he opens it up. And he hands us ham sandwiches on on hamburger buns, and here, here's your hamburger. And we laugh hysterically. <laughs> you, you know they put ham on hamburgers down there. That's called hamburguesos. But when, whenever you ask for a hamburger, that is, a lot of times instead of bacon, they'll put like this cheap ham, like this really thin sliced mm -hmm. ham, That's and they'll they put it on there. Yeah, instead of like uh, bacon, you know. So. And then if you order a hot dog, though, they'll put bacon on there. Be careful with those because I got really, really sick uh, eating those because the bacon isn't always cooked all the way. Oh. So they don't they don't cook them all the way and they wrap it. And they taste great. And then you get sick as hell because it's undercooked. <laughs> so, you know what? Let me tell you, though. Yeah, they taste fantastic. You know, mm -hmm. I, I will well, admit, you know, it is awesome. I've ever met in Both my life. Too. Were people in Guatemala? I didn't mean to interrupt you, Rye. No, no, no hardest, hardest workers I we have ever yeah, met. They definitely lives. are hard yeah. workers, multilingual, as you were talking about. And these people bust their butt and are the nicest, most polite human beings on the planet. And uh, they they barely make any money there. Do, so you were talking about realize oh, sorry, though. That most of the world speaks at least two languages. Yep. Because mm -hmm. English is the predominant language on the planet. That's mm -hmm. no lie. And so, what most cultures have to learn their language and English. Um, My uh, because, go ahead. So I don't. I, I don't know if you know. Like I, I I'm a. I'm an English tutor. So I tutor people to uh, to learn English. And I. Some of my students are hilarious. My one Brazilian student. She she had a joke for me. She said, "You know what's the number one most spoken language throughout the world?" And I was like, "I, I don't know. Is that is that Mandarin or something like that, or is it possibly English?" She's like, "No, it's bad English. That's what that's the number one most spoken yeah. language around the world." Yeah. I'm like well, English it was is good. often so hard for people because we have so many you know, slang terms. Well, we say but, but it, 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 so it's because hard. the English language is sometimes phonetic and sometimes not phonetic at all. You know, like, let, let's say you do in Spanish, everything is phonetics. It's easy. It's easy in that way, too. But in English, you know, you got the words like red, like the color red. And I read a book and then I read a book, you mm -hmm. know, and then it's like reeds that grow in the water. Uh, it, it's it's a mess. It's a mess. And we've also adopted like chow, you know, down in, in Mexico. They like to say chow. 
Yeah. But that's actually, you know, it's Chinese. And so whenever you, because of the crossovers, you know, mm -hmm. and that was given to them by the French because yep. the French at one time, Indochina and everything just got spread around. The Lebanese typically speak at, at least two different dialects of Arabic. Mm -hmm. And they also speak, if, if they're from here, they speak English, but then they also speak French because yeah. it was at one time colonized by the French. And in particular, the Ivory Coast, which is a French colonized, it was colonized by French speaking Lebanese. Mm -hmm. So there is a large community of Lebanese. And then there are Lebanese who speak French. They speak at least two or three different dialects of English, of uh, Arabic, then they speak oh, English. And then they'll also speak whatever South American country they're in, in particular, uh, uh, oh my gosh, the one where Shakira's from. What is, what is, the, what is the name of the country she's from? Colombia. Oh, Colombia. There's a large contingency of them there, uh, uh, whatever you call it, a community of them. I say contingency, a community. And it just shows you how Columbia. lazy Americans are, too. And I, I'm a, I love where I live. I love America. But my God, what we, we're, we're so small minded. Just want to know English. That's it. And then and then they want to complain when you tell them that the Bible is not necessarily translated correctly. They lose their damn mind. <clears throat> but let me let me tell you this: the average dipshit here can't speak <laughs> even English correctly. So then when you tell them, hey, you know, the Bible was written in Aramaic, Hebrew, and and you know they they get they mm -hmm. like, well, I don't care what it says. This is what I believe because this we don't you know, tell you something about that. And you're sitting there going like, that, that's the problem, dumbass. You don't, mm -hmm. because you're not, you know, it's not translating right. And I said this to, to one of my Muslim friends the other day. And, and, you know, they're doing Ramadan right now. And he was, I think he was just really hungry because he can't eat until night. But luckily it's not in August. I've seen right. it in August where you only have like nine hours of, of night, whatever. Um, yeah. here, here is the problem, you know, and I told him, I said, you, you don't speak Arabic. And so your translations of the Quran are incorrect. And he got upset. He didn't like what I said. No, this is the word of God. It's the absolute word of God. I said, okay. It, I don't, first, I don't totally believe that. But I said, if you, that's what you want to believe, you can believe that. But you're also not, you don't know Arabic. So if you don't know Arabic, forget it because the translations don't even make sense. Right. In fact, one of the, the, the uh, books is called The Rangers. Which is like, that's not even what it translates to. I mean, it's like completely not correct. So if you don't know uh, in, in Arabic, you're not going to know it. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, and that's like trying to read the Bible, which is ancient in most of the, and they'll, they'll be like, well, yeah, it does. Because, you know, some other guy said that that and that other guy said, and then that guy said. And so, yeah, this is, this is how ancient Greek, you know, ancient Greek is not Greek. First of all, it's two different things. Yeah. And but then th there are very few people who actually can translate ancient Greek, Aramaic, and Hebrew. Mm -hmm. And Hebrew, the, the slang Hebrew that they speak now, I'm sorry, but it's not the same as it was then. And no, there's no way, I don't care what these people say. They they go and they find a a way to believe, they find a religion that'll and, and what'll match what they already want to believe, what they have yeah. their preconceived notions, and then they say that's the truth. And if you impede upon that, then you're a sorry person that needs to be executed because you stepped on what they want to believe. That's the problem. That is the big, big problem. So here's what I'm going to do before we bounce, guys. Uh, okay. Rod, do you have any stories or anything you want to talk about or at your show or anything at all before we take off? Um no, I, I don't have really anything. I, I'm good other than I'm really looking forward to next week episode dropping. That's the Disneyland portals and uh, time travel. So yeah. it's it, it's a must listen. Like, I, I don't know. I, I, every episode I've been doing lately, I'm like, oh, my God, that's my that's my favorite episode. And that's my favorite episode. So, you know, right. my favorite it's guest. I was growing fast, just to say his numbers are growing fast. You yeah. And, 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 and I, I thank you both for that. You know, it, it's, I really appreciate the help of both of you guys, you know, and of course, all, all, all our viewers here, you know, as well, whoever has subscribed, you know, I really, really appreciate that. And it's, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely see things turning in the right direction. And, uh, you know, I, I've been approached by a couple of people to do some advertising for them as well. So it's, 
things are things are going really well. I got to be careful of that one because I want to make sure it um, aligns with with my uh, with my um, you know my I don't know what am I saying my beliefs my uh, my goals I don't know something like that. I, it's too late you're to really doing, think of that. You're doing a good job, right? But I, I you know we're talking about weird food there. When I was uh, traveling in South Korea. They have these things, these big, huge bins, uh, like these big, not bins, but big, huge pots all on the sides of the streets. And they're always stirring these things. And I remember I was walking by them so many times and it looked like pecans. It looked like pecans in almost a molasses sauce. And so finally, one day I was I was brave enough, you know, and I was pointing at that because I, I I don't speak any any uh, Korean. And they're like, you try, you try. And I'm like sure why not so they gave me one on a toothpick you know and i tried it and it was like eating a mouthful of dust it was terrible it was terrible and i went back to the hostel later and i was talking with some people i'm like man i tried this thing i have no idea what it was oh they're like oh that's silkworm larvae so you were eating silkworm larvae i was like okay and then whenever you go out on the street that's like all you smell and i was like Bleh. <laughs> it was it was it was terrible that was that was my great experience uh in uh in south korea yeah just thought i passed that one on but well, I started... know, from, uh, what's that my, there i had a nurse from who's originally from uh south korea ironically when i was just in the hospital so sweet uh and she talked about the food and she's like uh, talking about how hot her and her husband's american that he actually eats even hotter food than she does. She's like, I can't even hang. She's speaking broken English. Yeah. And she's like, I can't even hang with my husband. She's like, I keep telling him, you're going to get sick someday. You're going to have stomach problem. And you, you, you know, know Korean that. food is spicy. I, I, you know, like people don't understand. I know I was in, Korea, when I was in South Korea, I was having some of the um, Korean barbecue and I was like, just like, pouring sweat and after that i was going to thailand they're like oh wait you get in thailand it's much hotter and i went to thailand like, oh yeah you know? but no i actually found south korean food much hotter than thai food really because uh, thai, thai food can burn the it'll scorch you dude <laughs> uh, yeah, inside you know. it out right yeah i'm good on that stuff i like to taste my food without sweating i yeah. you know but but like the more and more i eat here the more and more i am um, you know, getting used to uh, the Mexican spice, you know, maybe, maybe not so much the habanero, but my, my father-in-law makes this habanero uh, oil sauce and it is, it is, del it is amazing, you know, so mm -hmm. it, it, it's really good. But I, I, I just want to say again, yeah. Josh and, and, and Josh, thank you so much for having me on Matt. Thank you uh, uh, as well, you know, for being part of this. Uh, absolutely. And then, and, and yeah, thank for you sure. for having me on Josh and, Bri, it's always a pleasure. And, and just to let everybody know, um, obviously, I'm behind because of being in the hospital. But within the next week, I'm going to be uh, getting some more new content out. I, I uh, you know, did did some uh, faceless content with, with being sick. And, and uh, I, I got uh, some good response on the video. So I'm going to try some more of that. I'm going to get my regular stuff out, get some of my uh, editing finished. And I have some really killer interviews that I have not gotten out yet. I need to get those out. So more content coming uh, over the next week. Uh, <clears throat> starting to slowly heal and get better and feel better. Thankfully, I'm not getting any, uh, uh, any more temps at night. So just, That's just good. looking forward to, to, to uh, you know, keep rolling. So thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah, and, and so the folks that are still in the chat, we got four four fifty or something. It's not like we what we had, but let me ask you guys something. D do you guys like this Friday format? Because I know that people were saying that they um, there were some things they would like to see where, where we could see the guests, you know, and because we just would talk to them, you know. And so in order to do that, though, with StreamYard, you can't have I can't have Mushu and, and Anthony on the other side. We'll still do that on Sunday because we don't have guests on Sunday. I just retell Josh, the calendar. Josh, I'm going to give you a thing, though. So if you set up an iPhone or something like that to, to shoot on uh, Mushu or Anthony, uh, you can send them the link and they can dial in and they can have a separate uh, like camera link. I, I, I did that on some of mine where I had two 
like I had my my phone set up and I had my my own computer as well. So I was able to actually bring bring in another guest like right there. So th that's a possibility if you want to do that. that. This is yeah, Hadley, right. everybody, by the way. This is my puppy, Hadley. Hey, Had. She to say hi. She was asleep. That's the cool thing about being there when you're at home. You get to have your pets around. Yeah. And But my pig will come in there and slam me in my leg, and I just got to pretend like he's not there. Because <laughs> he wants to see treats. your pig yet. I can't wait to see your pig. Oh, he, he's, a, he's a cool dude, man. He's a real sweetheart. He doesn't mess with nobody. You know, he, if he wanted to, he could be really, he could tear, there's a dog we have, uh, Beans, when she was a puppy, everybody see pictures of her, and I, I pick her up sometimes and show the camera, but she is, is become a terror, you know, and I had to like discipline her and make her stop being mean because she would try to bully the other dogs, and then she, she bit the pig on the face what? yeah it made him bleed and we just hear him screaming and i go in there and he's like three times her size yeah. and he could just tear her apart if he really wanted to and the poor thing just sits there going like ah, you know and i'm like i'm like whoop her ass i mean she's like biting you you know yeah, yeah, but, exactly but i'm glad he doesn't because you know he could hurt her but he won't fight back on her he'll push her away from him but he won't He's so passive, so docile, you know. Mm -hmm. And now he's gotten where when I walk by him, if I don't do what? I heard pigs are incredible pets. He's a great pet. I walk by him and he he just goes mm -mm, like he wants a treat. If I, and if I don't have anything in my hand, I'll be like truffles. I got nothing. Then he'll roll over, he'll no. his <laughs> belly rub, you know, and I'll pet his tummy. And that's what Anthony Anthony pets him. All yeah. the time, he's always I mean, he gets the animals in the oh. house bring a lot of love to the house. They are very, very sweet. Um, I oh. love our rabbits, but one of them poo pooed on his bed, and I heard him <laughs> crying. And so I walk over there, and he's like, eh, "They're like, oh, there were, really there were rabbit pellets on the bed." So Mushu, thank goodness, Mushu said, "I'll, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it." Because I was getting ready to walk out the door, and I said, "Oh man." You know, Truffles' bed has been poo pooed on because I think I think it was Cinnamon that did it. But uh, you know, and and it's just the house full of animals. It's what it is. We have to clean constantly. We clean. We sweep and mop every day. Luckily, we don't have uh, a carpet on. You know, and um, you know, the other day I walked upstairs. I remember what it was for. One of the ferrets was yelling at me, and I walk over there. And it's story. I named her story. And, and I see her in the little. But I, I know better now than to try to pull them out without Anthony around because they'll take off running immediately. And they head straight for the ledge. And so I'm afraid they're going to fall off. And and so they're little sneaky little turds. And I can be careful with them. But I love our animals. I love them all very, very much. Um, Th that could yeah, be like a side. It could be like a, a side hustle for you having a. I, I can see someone saying that you could have a. Uh, uh, a petting, petting zoo. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, have a side hustle. You have a petting zoo at your house. And there you go. Come, come to the house and check out the animals. We have so many. I mean, and maybe see cool, a dog, man. Maybe see a Bigfoot. Well, well, let's hope not. But, you know, they they have their own little community, you know, and it's it's uh, it's crazy. Um, when we've had some things happen in the house, you know, they'll all like kind of look. And you'll see them all looking and you'll know something's there. And sometimes mm -hmm. Elvira, yeah. my, my, my little dog, she's like my little therapy dog. When I have an anxiety, she knows. Mm -hmm. She comes running and jumps in my lap. And uh, one day I was having anxiety real bad, and I was on the phone. And I was on the phone with Barton. We were talking. And it was during all that with the war and all that. And the voodoo guy, King, was doing what he was doing. And so I saw something, and, I, and Elvira growled. Like, she, you know, she's this big. But she was acting like a lion, like she was going to protect me, you know. And she wouldn't let me get up. She was just like, no, nah, we're going to fight this, you know. And so I prayed, you know. And it's funny because she's so polite. She's she's, she's the, my favorite animal in the house. Yeah, but she's so polite. Like, she, you know, if I pray, she'll stop. She, she'll be, like, wanting to do something. But if I start praying, it's almost like she knows. And she'll stop People don't give animals credit. They're they don't give them enough important. credit, man. I'm no. telling you. I and they agree. have souls, in my opinion, as well. 100%. I totally, totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. So, Matt, what do you have in the horizon for you? What is going on in the world of your deal before we get out of here? Well, like I just said, I, I'm going to be uh, catching up on everything that obviously I didn't get done while I was sick. Um, I have so, next, next show, what do you got going on? 
Uh, the next show, I'm, I'm having uh, a live stream on Saturday. Um, I'm supposed, well, I might not actually with the person I thought so. I was, I was supposed to have Paranormal Paul. Uh, I, I wanted to have him on and help him out. Um, but he's not sure if he can make the time. If he has a show on at nine, he has a guest. And, uh, you know, he was hoping I can move back from, you know, all the way till 730. But the problem is, is I have a recording with somebody else as well, who I've put off for weeks because I've been sick. So I may have to reschedule with Paul. So if I don't have Paul on, I'm going to have to find someone else to fill. Mm. So that's so why that's, I am for tomorrow. tomorrow. Correct. Yeah. So I'm sure, I, I'm sure you can find someone, you know, maybe the Sasquatchers or something. Uh, yeah. Or you know, someone to... Anyone, you know, I, 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 mm -hmm. I, it's not hard to find someone. Um, no. So, but I am very excited. Like I said, more than anything, I, I just, I need to get these interviews that I have done edited. And there's I hear some you. really good ones that I can't wait to get out and some new uh, some new other videos. So if if the live stream, for whatever reason, reason doesn't work out tomorrow night, other stuff's coming quick. So Yeah. And your live streams, what time are they on Saturday? Uh, I'm, I'm shooting for just 8 o'clock uh, at p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. Um and only an hour. Uh, I, I think you and I had spoken. When are yours are nine, correct? My, mine so, comes on at, at nine. Yes, correct. Nine your time, but it's eight o'clock my time. And on Saturday, we do about two hours. These are always three hours. I always do three hours. It's just. It's and mine's only an hour, hour and a half at the most. So, uh, you know, I, I've, I've spoke with you about it and I've spoke with other people. I am going to uh, always be cognizant of not having any toes stepped on i want to work it out with everyone um sometimes it's going to happen though you just it just it has to you have to i mean everybody's got their own you know uh, us as a community and, and i know you guys are, are we're all yeah. good friends with the blondes and booze um we're good friends with um with 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 christopher garitano and we're all good friends with uh josh Nokio, and we're good friends mm -hmm. with uh Geez, everybody, pretty much Barton and the Inhumanoids, and then mm -hmm. uh, I'm friends with Hellbent Holler and the Hellbenders, and they do theirs on Monday. Barton's is on Wednesday, and Bettina was doing, but she's taking a hiatus because this the, the war just took a lot out of her. Yeah, and I, I feel terrible the way things went, but we we defended her, you know, and we got we took care of business. But the the thing is, it's not over. There's still people doing things and saying things, but it's never going to end totally. So you just have to learn to live, you know. And and so we we try to to be as as you know you know as accommodating as possible with one another. You have Tex from Texas Front Porch, mm -hmm. and then you have Boomer BMR. I love Boomer; he's a great guy. Yep. Um, all of them great people. So we're all just a community. We all try to live together, work together, whatever. And um, you know we do the best we can. You know, and and we try not to step on each other's toes, but it is what it is. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, I understand if sometimes you have to do what you have to do, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You're going to be on tomorrow. She said tomorrow, uh, at, on Saturday, you're going to be on at, from eight o'clock. You said your time, which is seven o'clock right. my time. Yep. Yeah. You ought, you ought to reach out to Bettina and see, cause I don't know what she's doing. I mean, I'm putting her That's not a bad there. idea. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Tomorrow. Yeah. That's a great idea. I thank you. And that. That's what we're, we're here. And I told B, I said, you know, I want you on my show. You know, I was on hers a long time ago. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm, I'm getting down the checklist of people that, you know, have been on and, uh, Rye, you've got to be a guest, just me and you on my live stream on Saturday as well. I'd love that. Uh, yeah. The, the, the Saturday, I, I'd, I'd love to do the Saturday, but I'm headed out of town. We have a, uh, yeah, I mean, we're down out of town. Here. I, I have, like I said, I got the checklist. Everybody that honored <laughs> me being on their show, I, I want everyone to be on mine as well. And, uh, 
know, it's it, this is this is really turning out to be just an amazing experience and a blast. And and I, I just real quick wanted to thank everybody again for all of the well wishes, the 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 love that has been shown to me for my health. And um, I got so many people say, Matt, so glad to see you're home. I can't tell you how glad I am to be out of the hospital. So um, this is only imagine. This is what gives me joy, man. Right? You, you know, everyone. I got yelled at even by Josh. They're like, "What are you doing, man? What are you doing a live stream? You just got." But right, you can't believe that, dude. I mean, you got to be. You got to take care of yourself, man. I mean, come on. It was, you know, that night. I that night was not smart. I agree. Yeah. I almost dipped out, but kind of scared us for a little bit there. I scared myself as soon as I got out of the green room. Uh, you know, my wife Stacy literally caught me. I almost went face down on the floor. Um, but I, I need this. I need to be here with you guys. I need I, to be. Uh, I, I was saying. I was saying that it's a. Uh, it's harder for you to not do it than for you to actually do it. It is. Yeah. And I will. And God bless you too. Thank you, Danita. Yeah. I want and to again, say thank you, know, you to thank you to everybody. Yep. Yeah. Thanks for having me on, brother. Yep. And, thank you for everybody that donated. We really appreciate it, and you know, I appreciate what you know what everybody supports the show. Um, things are going to just keep going. We're just going to keep getting doing more and more and more. Uh, don't forget tomorrow night I got the Alien Agenda show, which comes on at uh, eight o'clock. Uh, my guest tomorrow, um, Michael Anthony, will be on tomorrow night. And cool. we're going to do the show like we always do. And then next week, I would like to have you on Saturday on the panel, uh, Matt, next week on our show to we'll do the Alien it. Agenda. Right? Is that something you'd be interested in and coming on? 100, and doing the Alien Agenda? 100%. Yeah. We'll definitely. bring you on next Saturday. You two will be on next Saturday um, along with the, you know a couple other people. I think Christopher Jordan is going to be there all month along with uh, uh, Chris James from uh, Strange Things with Chris James, and then of course Curious Realm with Christopher Jordan. If you guys haven't had them on the show, you need to get them on. They're good. They're really good. And another person I would really try to get on is Paul Sinclair. Uh, he jumped I, on uh, at the end yeah. of the uh, the werewolf. And then we actually have. Yeah, get him on there because I love uh, it. it was a good show. We did what was it called? An impromptu werewolf story yeah. or something like that. <laughs> And then did, did I, it, how long did that go for? I heard that five one and a half it. hours. Yes, I knew wow. it was a long time. I, Two or three I in the morning, that. we had almost six hundred people in there. I mean, it's, so I just kept, you know, we just kept going. And I was doing q and A. Q &A. I was doing a Q and A, and everybody was really into the Q and A. And so I ended up. Christopher Garitano was on there, and he messaged me, and he was like, "Hey, you still up? Huh? I'm burning the midnight oil." He was taking a break from his project. He's got a big uh, movie thing going on. Um, guy's always doing something. So I said, why don't you hop on? So I messaged him. I sent him a link. He got on there. And then after that, uh, what's his name? Uh, Paul Sinclair, you know, he, he, he saw the, the chat and so he, he was in there and I, I met, sent him a link. So why don't you jump on too? So, he <laughs> yeah, man. so we all had a good time. We talked, here's what's going to happen though. Tuesday night, because we're going to do the Sunday, like always, everybody knows Sunday, Sunday's our big night. That's a seven to 10 show that you guys are welcome to, to come check it out. Seven to 10, be in the chat, whatever. Um, but here's what happens on, on Tuesday. I'm going to try and do this. It means I got to talk to this guy tomorrow. His name is Joel. Okay. And you might remember him from the encounter that I told from, um, uh, I want to say his real name, um, uh, Gerald. You might remember him from the encounter that I told of him talking about being in a cult where he was, for all, life, all intents and purposes, a werewolf. The, the guy, and I'm saying this is not a jokey, laughy thing. The guy, Joel, I did not realize was his aunt's boyfriend. And he's only a few years older than, than uh, Gerald. And he was a, a blood-drinking vampire. That's what they did. Not this pretend stuff, none of that. It was real. They were steeped in magic and did all kinds of bad things. And so I've talked to him now twice, and hopefully I can talk to him tomorrow. I got to get up and talk to him tomorrow. And I still got to go do legs tonight. I got to do legs tonight. I got to work out. <laughs> and, and then I got to get I got to get some sleep, and then I got to talk to this guy. So Isn't I, it like almost, what is it, like 1 in the morning? 1 a.m. So I'm going to go home and yeah. take an hour nap, then go do legs, and legs is brutal. I got to do legs. I have to. I have no choice. I, have I, to. I can't see how you home. can do that. The growth hormones, because because I I, I want to look like you know like this, see like that. I don't want to look like some 
you know, like when I get back on. Let's see if I can still do it. Like you used to be able to do it. Like, let me see. Yeah, you get that. the. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of tore when down though from yesterday. So I can't really do it. So to speak, I'm gonna start working out again too, and I get there. We go. Work out yeah. with with you guys when I see it. When I come down to the conference, Josh, we'll hit it. Before we go though, I I have to say something as well. There has been a a a group of people. Now I've gotten donations from from a, a, a number of people. Josh Turner and uh, just a couple other people have been. I have no words. Uh, Josh did. Uh, it's it's I not a. You know, it's not let a me thing. just say that we don't have to get in specific. Josh has just been there for me as a friend, and I wanted to point that out. I just want to thank you uh, for for being my friend. And Rye, you have been an incredible friend, and everybody uh, who has been supporting me, uh, just voices, and you know, I've had people donating for new equipment and stuff. I just wanted to thank everybody. So. Oh. I just want to take that opportunity. Uh, everybody, I, I really appreciate all the love and support. Well, you've been a good friend to me too, Matt, and we've talked a lot. And Rye, my I, wife wanted to give you something. I don't know yes. if she's told you this, but we have a group that was called, uh, par what is it called? Paranormal Lounge. Paranormal Lounge, which was Nellie's group, and she was always, but she hasn't had time to do much of anything. Mm -hmm. And um, she, we gave paranormal encounters to Barton Nunley a uh, year before last, and they've done, they've taken care of it and blown it up and turned it into in humanoids. And so that's their group. We had several groups we were doing. Um, you'll still see me in a lot of the bigger groups because I pluck stories out of there, and I still sometimes yeah. get caught up in the arguments and stuff, which is just stupid. I don't know why I waste my time, but 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 Barton's done it too. Yeah. Barton said he was in there for four days. <laughs> And I said, because I, I was, t I messaged him one day. He's like, he's like, yeah, I'm in this group. I'm, I'm, I'm arguing with these people. I was like, this is your wasting time of your life arguing yeah. with these people because you're not going to convince them of anything. So me and him have both fallen into that. We've all done that. And even Ken told me, you know, he goes, yeah, I was in there arguing with somebody. It's not worth it. No, it's not worth it. I still do that too. It, it, yeah, you, 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 you get kind of like cut it, like you get like sucked in and then you're sitting there. And the next thing you know, you're like, what am I doing? Like I got better you're wasting things. your time. I got better things to do to go hang out with my family or something. Yeah, yeah. I want. I'd want to say thank you so much for that. And I was telling Nelly that I want to turn that into, and I told Matt this as well. I want to turn that into our the supernatural paranormal roundtable. Um, what? What? I totally messed that up. Supernatural uh, town hall sessions. I keep messing it up. I want to turn I that into you that. To do it, just just Kodegas. So. Yeah. I think you should. What turn it yeah. into? Make it into yeah. my own. You do whatever you got to do with it. It's going to be your group. It's got okay. three thousand or some thousand. I don't know what it is. But yeah, twenty five hundred, twenty five hundred people. Twenty five hundred, whatever you got. It's you got it, and you can That's turn awesome. it into and use it as a springboard to do what you got to do, folks. If you haven't, you know, gone to these guys' uh, channels along with Yohola Tiger, uh, very good guy. He's a Cherokee Nation, and and go and check out his show. It's like and subscribe, like and subscribe to my channel, of course, and then Ryan Code Codex of Curiosities, right? Yeah, yeah that's so exactly. I, I remember, it's a mouthful. I, I, I know, uh, I've heard you saying it on your show, and I really appreciate that. Where you're giving me a shout out, I really appreciate that, yeah. Josh. Yeah, yeah, so go check that out. Matt Amps Planet 412. Matt, you've, you, you've grown quickly because yeah. you did it right. And now I'm going to dispel a rumor. Somebody said something. They said, how did this guy grow so fast? Blah, 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 blah. I said, because he did it the right way. And I can, you can ask my friend Josh Nokio. He's a good friend of mine. We, we, we talk, you know, we're friends. Um, and he can attest that he gave Matt, and so did I, quite a bit of advice. And Matt <laughs> did exactly what he was supposed to do. And he went on to a lot of other podcasts, including mine. And he did the well, podcast. Hi. My podcast is, you know, it reaches three or four times as many people as the, the, the YouTube. So you did the podcast because a lot of people listen to podcasts and they didn't watch the YouTube. So that's what he did. And that's how he grew. He didn't buy his subs and his views and all that other crap like oh. some of these people do. And another thing, too, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to do the show about joel the vampire and i'm going to call it interview with a vampire you know uh -huh. um and we're going that's what i want to call it i don't know anthony is that okay with you, you usually name it 
Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. So we're, we're going to call it that. And then it may be a two-parter, but it's only mm-hmm. going to be on the podcast. But you, it's going to be on the podcast, but it's also going to be on YouTube. But you can only catch the uh, interview with the werewolf, which was Gerald's story. And you can only get that one through watching the, the uh, live stream. So the people that are on uh, – to, to hear the beginning and how it all got started and what went down, they're going to have to go to this the, the live stream. They're not going to be able to get it just by listening to the podcast. So there's that. I like the live stream. I like the community we've built on YouTube. I like everybody I work with. And, you know, um, I wanted to ask you guys if, if it's okay if I say a quick prayer. Would you guys be okay with that? 100%. Yeah, I, I okay. Definitely. Father, I pray unto you in the name of Christ. I want to thank you for everything you've given us and done for us. Thank you for everything you've blessed us with. Forgive me for my sins. I'm a sinner, and I've committed many sins today, tonight, last night, this night so far up until now. Please help us not to sin so much, and please help us to like not fail in your eyes and to do everything we can. I know that we're only human, but we try to do the best we can, Lord God. Thank you for allowing me to have friends like Matt and and Rye and all the other people that are in this community that have come together and been such a blessing. And please end all the suffering and strife and the fighting. Things are for it is your will. Amen. Amen. I want to say that prayer, and I want I want to say it, even though there's people that don't believe in Christianity, they don't believe in Christ, whatever. That's your choice. You want to do whatever you want to do. But I think we need to pray because there is so much strife that had went on in these past six months. And we want to get past it and move on. And we want, the, you know, and so we need to be strong together. And I think that praying is something that we all need to do. I wouldn't be here without God either. That's right. I, mean, mm-hmm. you know, I would not be here. So, man, I'm, I'm amen. Man. Yeah. Amen. So, guys, I'm going to let you run. Uh, I'll see you right. Where, where are you headed? You got a long drive or what? Nah, it's just an hour and a half away. We're headed to uh, the next town over, Merida. And uh, my, we have some friends there. They are having a baby shower. And so we're just taking a couple of days going into an Airbnb. And it's right by the, well, I know I'm right by the ocean already, but there's a really nice beach up there. So that's what, that's what we're doing. Just chilling, relaxing. I'm going to take my computer with me in case we're going to stay an extra day. Then I can teach from there as well. Yeah, so that that's, you know, I'm telling you, we, we all have to come together, stay friends when things happen. I'm going to go ahead and say this. You know, there was something that happened between me and Clough. We were good friends. Mm-hmm. Clough made a mistake. He jumped the gun on something. I know what that's like. I reacted. I did not feel, I felt very disrespected and offended. But I don't hold grudges. I don't hold grudges. And I it's as far as I'm concerned, it's water under the bridge. He made a mistake, and 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 Larry made a mistake, and they've asked me to forgive them, and I, it's, it's done. I'm not a, I'm not one of those I, people that I've learned my lesson years ago, young young man, about holding grudges because mm-hmm. when you hold a grudge, you've burned a bridge. You don't want to agreed, do and 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 I actually think it takes a big man to admit when they are wrong and apologize. You know, it, it's I think that's a huge thing. You know, like of course would be better if they didn't do something that would cause them to do that. But for someone to come back and say, I messed up, I've, I've, I messed up th- th- that that's worth a lot. Agreed. Yeah. And that, and that to me is the difference between them and the people that we were at war with the people that we were at war with. There, there was no apology. There was nothing. It was always just attack after attack after attack. And, and finally it's like, you know, and I just, but I did stand by what I said. Clough was doing, trying to help, but I also mm-hmm. did not want any more of the videos because I didn't want to be responsible because I didn't want to fight with these people. Mm-hmm. And but I understand his point. He was angry, and so were we all. Yeah. And he was a, he became a voice for this community. And I'm going to say this, and it's not everybody's business, but it's important. I think that that when you're at war with people and you're fighting the, the element that we were fighting, you're in that hyper aggressive mode. And so everybody was in, you know at, at high alert. And so it was real easy. Like what happened between me and Brent Dill. I mean, it was like, I went on him because I thought he was, you know, 
with this other guy that was going after me and you're already in fight mode and you're just like, we're trying to demilitarize, trying to come down. You know, it was a very bad thing that went on. It was a lot of bad stuff. And so I get why Clough was feeling the way he was. Yeah. And we've been friends for a long time and he's been a fan of the show and he did what he thought he was supposed to do when he was defending us. But like I said, you don't always need to do that. You know, there's times when you have to just let things go. Yeah. And he thought he was defending someone who said some things and then later said, look, I'm sorry, I may not have said the whole truth. And then, but I forgive them too. Okay. They, their feelings were hurt. They didn't understand. And now we're all good. Everything's fine. And I just want things to go forward and us not have problems. And I hope that um, we can all grow and learn together. Maybe one day we'll find the answer to some of these crazy things. All right. I agree. So that's it. Yeah. I'll see you guys. Y'all, y'all be safe. You too. Yeah. Thank you. you too. Bye, Bye, everybody. Good night, guys. So that is Matt Imsch. Uh Matt came onto the show months ago um, about some stuff that had happened to him uh, in their Youngstown, Ohio, or I guess in Youngstown, Ohio. Uh, he had a dogman encounter. So me and Matt have a lot in common and we've talked extensively about these creatures and what they are, what they may be, or you know what they aren't. And we, I, I should have said it when he was on here, but one of the things we've kind of come to the conclusion, we do believe, and I can speak for him because we talked about this last night, that these things can be a form of shapeshifter. Um, a lot of people don't want to believe that. They don't want to believe that. Just They don't want to believe a lot of things. They want to be sit in the box and say, this is the world. It makes them feel good. It makes them feel safe. It makes them feel better about the world that we live in. Unfortunately, that's not how the world actually works. And that's the truth. But even if you don't believe like me, and even if you believe complete opposite of me, as far as like, you know, unless you're worshiping the devil and you're doing bad things to people, then I don't want anything to do with you. But if, you know, you can be whatever religion you want and you can believe whatever you want, I'm not going to hate you. I'm not going to love you any less because it's not it's not for us to do that. We're not supposed to be that way. So everything that I do on this show is, is geared toward inclusivity and trying to make everyone feel as comfortable as possible. And I think that we are achieving great things here. And like I said... Wait until this thing comes out on Tuesday. You're going to be uh, blown away by some of the information that was given to me. It's pretty heady stuff. I don't know that it will be this Tuesday because if I don't get the interview done with him tomorrow, um, then I won't be able to do it on Tuesday. But I have to make sure I get every bit of information because that's the only way that I can um, do it and do it well. And I don't, I don't want to give you some halfway whatever. So if not, then I'll, I'll do another episode and then it'll be the next Tuesday. But anyway, it doesn't matter. There'll be an episode on Tuesday and, and there'll be one on, uh, I'll be on Blondes and Booze on Thursday. Folks, I would consider it a personal favor if you would go to Blondes and Booze and like and subscribe. Those ladies are trying so hard to grow their channel. They're doing everything they can and they're doing everything they're supposed to be doing. And they're very respectful of me and my family and they treat us very well. And um, Brandy and Krista have been nothing but nice and kind to myself and Nellie, and they've been a wonderful help to the Nunleys, Barton and Letitia. They are trying to grow their channel, and they've been there in their corner trying to do everything they can to help them. They help everybody. So they help Tex. They help Jason McLean. They've helped uh, uh, Boomer. You know, they've helped us all. And I, it's an honor for me to go on there every Thursday and talk and be on their show. I was on there last night. Um, so, you know, that's it. You know, I just want you guys to show them some love. If you would just go to blondes and booze and give them some love, give, give them a, a like and a subscribe. I appreciate it. We will be here tomorrow night. I'm so excited. I love Saturdays. Saturdays are the, are the best. I love, we get to talk about the alien agenda, what it may or may not be. And, um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to do it tomorrow. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in and good night.